Chapter 91 The Shadow Ghost, 1, You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio The entire room was filled with silence. That was how strong Count Denver's remarks were. As they seemed to make no sense, Daniel Cairo said, I do admit that Roman Dimitri is a great swordsman. He is a blessing for the Cairo kingdom, considering he is a swordsman who achieved three-dot star in his twenties and even defeated Homer. However, everyone gathered here knows that Roman Dimitri cannot change the trend of this war by that much, O.org The reason the four factions of Cairo valued Roman was because of the value he would have in the future. As he achieved three-dot star at such a young age, all were rushing to get him. But that also meant that Roman Dimitri could not win against the Hector Kingdom right now. Roman's plan to cause internal divisions seemed nothing but the courage of a young warrior who hadn't seen the harsh reality of the world yet. Even Marquis Benedict sided with the king. I have the same thoughts. Roman Dimitri is the future of Cairo. It is more important to minimize the damage to the Cairo kingdom through wise judgment rather than losing such a young talent. In any case, the southern front has already been captured by the Hector Kingdom. This is a war we have already lost. That was a realistic decision. Furthermore, Roman Dimitri was someone Marquis Benedict wanted to take in. There was no way he could let him die out there. Since he had already done his duty at the southern training center, he was thinking of taking in Roman as soon as he came back. Thus, everyone was against Count Denver's plan. Based on the information they knew, no one would make the mistake of siding with Count Denver. What should I do? Count Denver suppressed the laugh that almost leaked out. He had managed to obtain some incredible information from the higher.ups. And if he told the truth here, the tide of war would be turned, but he didn't do that. Even though he had the blood of Cairo, his spirit was that of Valhalla. As everyone seems to be rejecting the plan, I won't push it further. However, I don't think it is necessary to give the Hector Kingdom what they want so soon. As they have given us three days, we can move our troops in preparation for the war continuing forward. However, how about accepting the demands if there is no change on the southern front within the next three days? That was a compromise. Edwin Hector had given them three days to decide. It was enough time to come to a decision but not enough for them to overturn a war. Thus, Count Denver placed a bet. If meaningful results came thanks to that, then everyone would re-evaluate Roman's value. Then, he wouldn't only be revealed to be a four-dot star, but a monster who far surpassed any ordinary four-dot star or a swordsman. Was it because Count Denver made a reasonable proposal? Daniel Cairo, who had been thinking for a while, nodded his head. Either accept the proposal or reject it. We do need time. Thus, from now on, the Cairo Kingdom will prepare for both continuing the war with Hector, and moving forward with negotiations with them. He basically wanted to be prepared for any possibilities. Everyone except Count Denver had accepted the fact that the war was over when the warp gate was captured anyway. That meant they weren't expecting any miracles. At the same time, on the southern front, Henry Albert was blown away by the sight in front of him. Damn it! Back when he began to follow Roman, his chest was puffed with unfounded confidence. When he saw Roman, who had slaughtered countless enemies, he felt confident that he could overcome any danger. But what happened then? Things went wrong from the very start. Because of his poor stamina, he couldn't keep up even with Roman's troops and lost sight of them shortly after they had departed. And when he finally arrived at the southern training center while searching for a trail, he saw a terrible sight. This is so fucked up. What he saw was truly horrifying. The place that had been peaceful a while ago was now a wasteland, and bodies with familiar faces were lying everywhere. Nevertheless, Roman Dimitri was nowhere to be seen. At that moment, his mind went blank. It was because of the ominous thought that Roman Dimitri might have lost. He turned back. We will retreat to the first defense line. The heroic spirit he had earlier was now lost. The only thing running through his mind now was safety. 
he needed a fence that could protect him from the enemies that had destroyed the southern training center. However, the sight that greeted him when he reached the first defense line was also terrible. Oh, God. His mind went blank again. He truly had no idea how serious the current situation was. Although the Hector Kingdom had made a surprise attack, the fifth defense line blocked them, thanks to Roman. Thus, he thought that there may be some way the other defense lines had also blocked them. However, Henry Albert had no choice but to fall down on the ground while trembling when he saw the harsh reality with his own eyes. It's already over. The first defense line had also been destroyed. That was the horrible truth. As if it wasn't enough that the southern training center had been attacked and destroyed, the first defense line was gone as well. Now, there was no hope of winning this war. He jumped up and admitted that Cairo had already been defeated. However, there was no need for Henry to sacrifice himself. We will retreat to the mountains right now. Move fast. He made a quick judgment. The mountains in the south weren't a suitable escape route because they were quite steep. Nevertheless, that was a much better option than dying. Henry Albert ran so hard that his body was totally drenched in sweat. His already low stamina had been depleted, and his soldiers' expressions looked like their souls were trying to exit their bodies. Still, Roman Dimitri's whereabouts were unknown. Nevertheless, even if he had survived and chosen to fight, Holding on to the southern front was no different than jumping into a pit of fire. A hero of war. I don't need any of that fame. Living should be the highest priority. After running for a long time, the surrounding landscape changed, and he seemed to be in the middle of a grassy mountain. As he judged that he was safe now, he sat on the ground to catch his breath. Huff. 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 Huff, I lived. Some people might still be fighting below the mountain. Nevertheless, once he crossed the mountain, he would surely be safe. And just as he was thinking that, SHK. Shu. Be quiet. Someone had drawn a cold sword to his neck. And the one who did that was Chris. Henry Albert, who was about to pee his pants, sighed when he saw it was Chris. But, why was Chris aiming his sword at Henry? It was to prevent him from making any sounds. Once he retrieved the sword, Chris took the lead and started walking. Follow me. Was it because of the relief of being alive? Henry just followed him silently. Why is Roman's knight here? It was strange. Roman Dimitri said he was heading to the rear, so why was his knight in the middle of the mountain? He thought he might have come to the mountain because of the attack on the southern training center, but that also didn't make any sense. That was because if Henry had been in that position, he would have already crossed the mountain. Although he had escaped quite far, he couldn't say that the enemy wouldn't be able to pursue him till here. How far did they walk? Henry Albert's eyes widened when he saw the new scenery before him. What is this? Although he had only taken a few steps, the landscape had totally changed. What was before him now was a perfectly prepared camp. It stayed covered while covering a suitable size for a camp, and there was a space for the soldiers to rest as well. It was hard for Henry to believe this place was in the middle of the mountain. Considering the size of the camp, he should have been able to see it from far away, but only when he came close did he see it. His soldiers' reactions were the same as his. And seeing that he wasn't the only one stunned, Henry asked, when the hell did you build such a hideout? Chris still didn't stop walking. Once he signaled the guards to say there wasn't any danger, he answered Henry's question. On the way to the rear of the southern front, we confirmed that the training center had been attacked. Then, our liege decided that the rear had already collapsed, so he commanded us to go straight to the mountains and establish this secret hideout. Then we must run over the mountain and get to safety. Why are you all still staying here? Chris stopped walking and turned to look at Henry with eyes full of disgust. The war isn't over yet. The reason we are here is to protect our allies, like Mr. Henry, and kill the enemies who will come to the mountains. 
A mountain is a good place to face enemies with a small number of troops. If you had been one of Hector's troops, my sword wouldn't have stopped at the neck, but would have cut it off before you even realized what was going on. That was a cruel remark. There was a wall of status between Chris and Henry, yet Henry didn't say anything as he had seen Chris in action now. Roman and his soldiers, each one of them was a monster. And particularly, Chris was someone who had outstanding fighting skills even among those monsters. How does the Dimitri family have so many monsters? It was already tough for him to accept. Till, as he couldn't see Roman anywhere, he asked Chris about him. Then, Chris answered, my liege is currently dealing with the enemies of Hector on the front line. Henry Albert's face turned pale. As he expected, Roman Dimitri was crazy. Winning or losing a war was directly related to one thing, the loser's death. Immediately after the first defense line collapsed, the troops trying to flee from there started being slaughtered unilaterally. Slash. Quack. Ack. There was no way they could survive. Cairo's soldiers only groaned as they were being attacked from all sides, and they fell one after another while screaming. Edwin Hector had nailed the need for many prisoners. However, as they had taken the entire southern front over in such a short time, too many prisoners would obviously be dangerous. That was why a massacre was currently going on. Death and blood could be seen everywhere. Brandt, who was a lieutenant of the first defense line, couldn't hide his pale expression as he looked at the rapidly declining army. Donald, you bastard. Before they were attacked, Brandt had witnessed Count Donald talk to Roman on a call, and if Donald had only listened to Roman's suggestion, the current slaughter would have been avoided. Nevertheless, Donald said that retreating was a shame, but because of that, the first defense line had now fallen. The Hector Kingdom is fully prepared. They started with a surprise attack, occupied the rear, and even brought flares. This was a fight we could never win. That's probably why Roman Dimitri suggested we retreat to the mountains. I mean, he was aiming for another plan, but it meant abandoning the southern front. He didn't mean to say it was cowardly. Instead, he thought Roman's decision was right. In exchange for the carelessness, the rear of the southern front was occupied so quickly, and from that moment, the results were already decided. It was an overwhelming defeat. The bitter taste still lingered in his mouth. There was so much blood that just the smell of blood was enough to make him want to puke. Quack. The soldier right beside him fell to the ground. As it was a situation in which the enemy's spear had pierced the soldier's head, Brant swung his sword toward him instantly. Swish. However, the attack failed, even though it was almost instantaneous. And when his eyes met the furious eyes of the one who looked like a knight, goosebumps rose all over Brant's body. Is this it? He could feel the next attack coming toward him. He knew at the moment their defense line collapsed, the fact that everyone on the southern front, including himself, would not be able to go back alive. It was messed up. However, the moment he was about to accept his death, swish. Quack. Blood splattered on the ground. And simultaneously, the head of Hector Kingdom's knight could be seen in the air. Then, in front of Brandt, who was astounded, a man with black hair suddenly appeared. Editor's thoughts. Finally, Roman Dimitri enters. Henry seems to have been saved, and Roman's ruthless attitude can be seen in Chris. Also, Hector seems to be in a lot of trouble. Let's see how many days it takes to win the war. Also, we have reached so many views now. Thank you for your continuous support, guys. Have a beautiful day. Chapter 92 The Shadow Ghost, 2, you are listening at NovelFull.audio The soldiers of Hector literally couldn't believe the sight before them. Rather than the fact that a knight of Hector was killed in a single blow, they were stunned seeing a man running toward all of them by himself. An enemy. Kill him. Dozens of soldiers of Hector rushed in to take down the one man who had managed to kill a knight of Hector with a single blow. And Roman Dimitri, who had appeared on the battlefield all alone, 
struck the enemy's head dot on as if the massive difference in number was nothing to him. Slash. Papak. Quayak. It was literally a one-dot-sided massacre. The soldiers who had rushed in great force had already left the world while screaming, and the soldiers who had stopped to comprehend what just happened had their entire bodies cut down by a single sword. It was literally just a sword. There was no sign of even an aura on that sword. Although it was purely based on physical ability, Roman Dimitri was slaughtering his enemies as if it was too easy. One by one, every time Roman moved his sword, death followed. Some even stretched out their arms to try and hold down Roman, but before their arms even stretched entirely, Roman killed dozens of soldiers in his vision. He was truly a monster. Nevertheless, the thing even more shocking than the overwhelming force was that Roman was fighting all of them by himself. This is insane. The enemy is alone. Keep calm and attack him. Attack from all directions. It was an unusual situation. Too many soldiers were focusing on a single enemy, but they still couldn't understand how Roman was committing a one-dot-sided slaughter despite being all alone. Hector's soldiers continued to groan. Their common sense obviously said that a large group would win against a single enemy, but as the fight progressed, the corpses lying on the floor were only those of Hector's soldiers. Nevertheless, they didn't know it was an unfair fight in the first place. They didn't know that Roman was someone who, rather than injuring his enemies over time, cut off their necks whenever he got the chance. From start to finish, it didn't take that long. Shortly after Brandt recognized that the existence before him was Roman, what seemed to be hell in his eyes had unfolded on the battlefield. Quack. That was the end. Even the last soldier had now fallen down on the ground. And seeing all of Hector's soldiers lying on the ground without even moving slightly, Brandt looked at Roman with a pale expression. What the hell just happened? Brandt couldn't believe that such a monster existed in the Cairo kingdom. The greeting was short. When Brandt saw Roman introduce himself as Roman Dimitri, his heart began to pound intensely. Was it really true that he was going to do the guerrilla operation? When he saw him talk with Count Donald, he mentioned abandoning the first defense line. However, that could also be seen as giving up the southern front. It was a common dot sense decision anyway. As the warp gate had already fallen into the enemy's hands, there was no way for them to survive against the Hector Kingdom while staying here. The geographical advantage of mountains. That looked like a joke as well. The Hector Kingdom would surely have a hard time dealing with the remnants hiding in the mountains, but there was no place on the southern front that they could use as a fortress now. Summarily, guerrilla operations weren't a good strategy. While they were taking advantage of being in the mountains, the enemy could instead block the escape route and annihilate the remnants as well. Nevertheless, Roman Dimitri stayed. Although he had enough time to escape, he didn't give up on this place. Come to think of it, it was a bit unusual even when he contacted Count Donald. He noticed that the warp gate was captured but still contacted us and suggested we run away as well. It almost seemed like foresight now. Obviously, Roman's judgment was correct, but the guerrilla operation was still reckless. Nevertheless, Brandt couldn't help but look at Roman with respect. Roman Dimitri knew he was in danger, but he stayed behind and continued to fight for the Cairo kingdom. Thus, Brandt said, Sir Roman Dimitri, you were right. Count Donald made a decision to stay and ended up dead, even though you had given him the right advice, and the first defense line has now fallen into the hands of the Hector Kingdom. This war is already over. The Hector Kingdom has already gone to deal with the second defense line, and they won't last that long. He bowed his head. He didn't know why Roman was moving all alone, but he was sure that the guerrilla operation would be meaningless now. Knowing who Roman Dimitri was, Brandt rather raised his voice and urged Roman to get to safety. You want me to give up? Yes. There are things in the world that are physically impossible. I have just witnessed how strong Sir Roman Dimitri is, but the number of people the Hector Kingdom has brought is too large. 
there is no way you can defeat all of them by yourself. So, how about retreating through the mountains? No one will point their hands at you. I have witnessed how Sir Roman Dimitri has truly done his best here, and I will let the others know about it as well. So, please make a wise judgment and get to safety. Perhaps. Brandt thought that Roman had come back to take revenge for someone he lost while going up against Hector. Actually, he could think of no other reason why Roman Dimitri would be moving alone with his common sense. Therefore, he thought that Roman had lost his subordinates and was now getting revenge for them. It's a wise decision. Roman judged that Brandt's advice wasn't wrong. Actually, even if they all retreated now, no one would think bad about Roman. Still, I don't like it. That was not because of patriotism. That wasn't because Roman Dimitri was from Cairo and the southern front where he was serving fell into the hands of the Hector Kingdom star. Asterisk the only reason Roman judged it like that was because it was a matter of self. Esteem. Roman didn't want to make words like, even though Roman was present on the battlefield, he didn't make much of a difference and did nothing into reality. That was the same reason Roman had risked his life for. Still, for something like risking one's life, the gains to be gained here were small, and there was much to lose. Nevertheless, in the process of being born to reaching the peak in Murin, a world where the weak served as food for the strong, Beck Jong. Hyuk learned one thing. I cannot set a precedent that undermines me even once. That was it. That was why he stayed here and didn't run away. And gazing directly into Brandt's eyes, Roman said, No. This war hasn't ended yet. Roman looked back at the situation from the outbreak of war till now. The situation of the Hector Kingdom is bad due to famine. As the food to feed people has turned scarce, it is impossible for them to properly secure military supplies. Nevertheless, the fact that they waged war means that the Hector Kingdom was in a desperate situation. It was a simple thing, Hector was aiming to solve their nation's problems through this war. All of Hector's kingdom's actions can be explained by such a strategy. There is little incentive to them invading the southern front, given it is barren when compared to other areas. But after observing how they made an effort to get control of the southern front and capture the warp gate rather than launch a straightforward invasion across the border, they were aiming to isolate the southern front flawlessly. They will probably try to contact the higher.ups now and negotiate until they come to an agreement. Roman read the intentions of his enemies. As Hector wanted to end the war as soon as possible, their weakness was exposed. Thus, Roman said, this war is a very special case. The reason the Hector kingdom wanted to occupy the southern front so soon was because they couldn't afford this war to go on for a long time, along with the obvious reason of reducing their own sacrifices. Every war has a purpose. And Hector's purpose is to solve their nation's difficulties through this war. That is why they are aiming to completely capture the southern front. They want to negotiate without any problems. What? Brandt was stunned. Roman's words were hard to understand. Going to war because the nation was going through difficulties. How could he accept something like this as the reason? It is a simple matter. The Hector Kingdom attacked the Southern Front, which they couldn't even profit much with. Do you think that Hector will continue to defend the Southern Front while their people continue to starve in the nation? Of course not. They are now betting the fate of their nation here. When the nation was on the brink of destruction, Hector decided to draw their sword to live. If they did nothing, they were going to die anyway. Thus, they made their last effort to continue to survive, wage war. Roman made his decision. We do not have to face the forces of Hector out here. If the number of enemies is 10,000, then dealing with only 100 of them, which is only 1%, will change the tide of this war. The Hector kingdom will suffer because of staying out here, and the royal family of Cairo will not easily accept the request of Hector. That is why we have hope. That much is enough. Just by creating a small variable, we can burn the plans of Hector to the ground. When he heard those words, Brandt couldn't hide his admiration. The thoughts he had weren't wrong. 
Roman wasn't an ordinary person, and his perspective on the battlefield was quite unique. The only problem was that Roman's plan wasn't as easy as he made it sound. Will that even be possible? It is possible. Brandt couldn't continue any further. That was because before he even asked Roman about his doubts, we have already achieved the intended purpose. Roman Dimitri shocked him. The Hector Kingdom had begun its attack on the second defense line. Charge. Thud. Rumble. The flare shot the wall. Some of the walls had already collapsed due to the repetitive attacks, and Cairo's soldiers could be seen screaming while being covered in flames. Nevertheless, Edwin Hector wasn't attacking them in a hurry. Now that they had finished contacting the royal family, time was on Hector's side. From now on, minimizing the damage on their side was the highest priority. The plan is perfect. They had been preparing for it for one year. And Edwin Hector had finally turned the situation he had played countless times in his mind into reality. While distracting the enemy's focus, they occupied the warp gate. That was when the war had already ended for Cairo. In Edwin's plan, once they captured the warp gate, there was no possibility of them losing this war. Actually, even saying they had already crossed the hurdles wouldn't have been an overstatement, either. From now on, they only needed to deal with the remnants of Cairo and receive an appropriate compensation to end this war. Nevertheless, even though the entire situation seemed advantageous, Edwin Hector still had troubles in his heart. In my plan, Baron McCleary's death was never counted for. The fifth defense line is the weakest among all the defense lines. However, Baron McCleary still died. Roman Dimitri. Does it mean that he was a variable powerful enough to overcome the vast difference in power? Edwin Hector always doubted himself. Even if he was in a situation in which everything was going smoothly, he always looked back and tried to find any mistakes or things he might have missed. Nevertheless, no matter how many times he had looked back, the variable known as Roman Dimitri didn't seem to be that strong. His reputation was well known, but a three-dot star or a swordsman wasn't someone who could turn the tides of war. Contrary to the original plan, our attack on the fifth defense line failed. What are the variables we need to watch out for? Even though I have looked through it repetitively, there are no variables strong enough to put us at risk. Even if Roman Dimitri leads an entire army against Hector, Cairo cannot defeat Hector with their current power on the southern front. Even if Roman Dimitri's force is more than we expected, although it could be difficult, it wouldn't be fatal. The Hector kingdom is not weak enough to be swayed by only a single individual. Before he attacked the second defense line, Edwin Hector had given the order to deal with any remnants of Cairo. He was concerned they would increase Roman's force, so he decided to block anything like that from happening. He did his best to suppress his doubts. Even though his nerves kept warning him, his head had concluded that nothing wrong would happen. Just then, a soldier entered and reported, Prince Edwin. The contact with the 1st Battalion, which had left to deal with the remnants of Cairo, has been lost. Even though it was only one report, the ominous thing soon spread. We have lost contact with the 2nd Battalion. The contact with the 3rd Battalion is no different. With each report, Edwin Hector's face turned as cold as ice. Because of the variable, his ominous feelings seemed to be turning into reality. Editor's Thoughts Finally, Roman has begun to counterattack the strategist of Hector. How will Edwin respond? The next few chapters will be interesting. We will see guerrilla operations in action soon. Chapter 93 The Shadow Ghost, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Edwin Hector headed to the barracks and left behind the battlefield. As the barracks were the designated spot where commands were given, all of the commanders under him were also ordered to arrive. Jackson. Report the situation. Yes, Prince. The leader of the Ranger unit, Jackson, stepped forward. The 3rd Battalion was mobilized to deal with the remnants of Cairo immediately after we dealt with the 1st defense line. However, contact with them has been lost since around an hour ago. 
At first, I thought there might have been an issue with the magic stone, but seeing that we have lost contact with three battalions, it seems the enemy has initiated the counterattack. What is the expected damage? Around 300 people, Prince. As soon as Edwin heard that, his expression turned cold. They had initiated this war with a perfect plan. Nevertheless, the fact that a single variable dealt with their warriors made his heart shudder. Most of the forces on the southern front had locked the gates and chose to retreat. Thus, it could only have been Roman Dimitri who killed Baron McCleary and decided to cause damage to us even in such a situation. The fear seems to have turned into reality. Roman Dimitri chose not to flee to the mountains, but to remain on the southern front and fight against us. Edwin's voice was chilling. He didn't like, from the beginning, whenever the name of Roman Dimitri came forward in this war. That was because, from the first time the cog wheel in his plan had gone awry, Edwin Hector kept noticing his name every time a problem occurred. We will have to alter the plan. Leaving someone like Roman Dimitri alive will certainly come back to bite us later on. Commander A square-dot-faced man, one of the commanders under Edwin, continued in a firm voice, as the commander has said, a variable that wasn't accounted for in the original plan has occurred. Baron McCleary is dead, and Roman Dimitri is probably planning to mobilize the remnants of Cairo. Nevertheless, that isn't important. The southern front has five defense lines along with the rear. With the most important position, the rear, and the first defense line in our grasp, capturing the rest of the southern front will surely weaken Cairo's counter even more. We should see the big picture. Instead of focusing on a rat like Roman Dimitri, it is more important to entirely destroy the defense lines. Roman Dimitri was a small variable. Even if he was, if this siege failed and swayed because of him, their entire plan would burn down to ashes. In the next three days, they couldn't give Cairo any chance to counter them. Even if some variables had occurred, they had planned to destroy the defense and choke down the breath of the entire southern front within three days. That was why Edwin was dissuaded by what he was told. He was the star of Hector. From his long experience, he knew that he didn't act normal whenever discomfort kept disturbing his thoughts. Nevertheless, Edwin had already made his decision. No. What is important now is not to focus on the second defense line, which cannot even counterattack, but to deal with the variable that has messed up our plan through unexpected methods. Withdraw the troops right now. From now on, we will completely annihilate the rats of the southern front. As soon as they heard those words, the faces of all the commanders under Edwin were dyed with shock. The second line of defense wouldn't last long. With victory in sight, it wasn't easy for all the commanders to follow Edwin's new command. Eventually, a commander said, it is a reckless decision. There will only be a few remnants left. It won't be too late to kill them all once we have captured the defense lines. And how can it be possible for the enemy to turn the tide with such a small force? That was correct. Also, it wasn't like Edwin didn't know that, but from the moment he received the first report that was related to Roman Dimitri, he didn't like how the plan was going. It was because of his instincts and senses. Most people say that instinct and common sense are two different things, but, in the end, instinct always originated from common sense. After revising the plan, something that he had already done countless times over the past year, his instincts told him that Roman Dimitri was a risk. Edwin Hector said, I understand what you mean. Nevertheless, as the commander, I need to be prepared for the worst. And the worst thing I am worried about isn't failing to bring down all five defense lines. It is Roman Dimitri, who is doing unexpected things on this southern front. We don't have time. If Roman Dimitri manages to create an unpredictable variable, then the situation will turn out worse than if we are not able to capture the defense lines. It was a simple matter. Among problems that could be fixed and problems that could not be fixed, Edwin considered the latter as more important. It would be fine if he managed to take down the defense lines, but he couldn't understand Roman's Dimitri actions completely. Not the worst, but definitely the lesser evil. 
If the majority of you all think that capturing the second defense line is a priority, even after hearing my explanation, I will let go of my stubbornness and follow your opinion. Actually, they all knew that Edwin had a good reason to make that decision. Still, the reason they asked him to think was because any human could make a mistake. Everyone nodded, which meant they understood. Jackson spoke for everyone, we will follow your words. Nevertheless, did they know that, by that judgment, the Hector kingdom had set foot in the southern mountains earlier than expected, and Roman Dimitri was waiting for them to arrive there. The sun went down. While the peasants went home and had dinner with their families, a bright fire lit up in the darkness. Crackle. Crackle. The bright fire was created when Hector's soldiers lit their torches. When you find the enemies, do not attack hastily. The topmost priority is to blow the whistle and inform everyone else. The remnants of Cairo have aura swordsmen as well. Thus, if we push our enemies into a corner and attack them at once, we will be able to take all of them down without taking much damage. We understand. The commanders of the 2nd and 3rd battalions, who were in charge of the search in some places, both raised their voices. The southern mountains were wide. Obviously, if one tried to search quickly, one would miss the enemy. That was why they were slowly searching for the enemies. There was a risk of losing one's life if the enemies appeared suddenly, but simultaneously, the enemies would be surrounded once their location was revealed. That was Edwin's idea. Rather than wasting time with an ambiguous search, Edwin wanted to wipe out all the enemies in the mountains at once. Crackle. The nearby darkness was pushed away by the fire. The soldiers continued to climb the mountain slowly. They were looking around meticulously, to the point of even checking out the sound of someone stepping on dry leaves. Ha, the commander, who had taken the lead, exhaled his breath and continued to look around with a stiff face. The survivor who had followed Baron McCleary into battle had told him that Roman Dimitri was truly like a shadow ghost on the battlefield. The moment any soldier showed the slightest carelessness, their heads were cut off by him. No matter how prepared they were to fight, even though they had vowed to risk their lives for the nation, no one wanted to die first. Step. Step. When the flame shone in the darkness, the area that couldn't be seen earlier lit up. On the right. Nothing is wrong, answered the soldier who was following right next to him. When the commander saw that the soldier was moving while even pricking the ground with a stick, he decided it was safe to turn his head back and continue his own search. At that moment, swish. Darkness covered the soldier. Let alone blowing the whistle, he couldn't even make any movements to call for help. It was because, even though it was a fleeting moment, his neck had already been twisted. The soldier, who had died because of not being able to check properly, made a blunt sound as he fell down. Nevertheless, the commander didn't hear that. No, it wasn't just the commander, but the entire battalion moved forward as if nothing was wrong. Left. Nothing is wrong. As soon as he turned his head back again, another death occurred. Once the commander had confirmed that there were no issues, the darkness had again covered a soldier and taken his life. One death, two deaths, and so on. Actually, it didn't feel strange at first. However, when he saw that the surrounding fires had dimmed down extremely, the commander realized something had gone wrong. W. What is this? His face turned white when he saw there was no soldier behind him. Even when he had started, the surrounding area was brightly illuminated by the fire torches, but now, only darkness could be seen behind him. His heart sank down to the bottom. He hurriedly blew the whistle as he realized that the others had died even though they were walking so closely, no, he tried to blow it. Swish. Dot as soon as he placed the whistle in his mouth, the commander's neck was twisted. Thus, with a whistle in his mouth, the commander also collapsed, as if he was a doll with a broken thread. Still, that was only the start of it. Soon, all over the mountains, Hector's soldiers began to die one by one. The secret didn't last long. 
The death of the soldiers was discovered soon after a loud whistle pierced the stillness of the darkness and resounded everywhere. Beep. Beep. The enemy has appeared. Check out the allies. We must cut off the escape route and drive the enemy to one place. Everyone was obviously upset. All soldiers turned their eyes back and forth to check their surroundings. Among them, there were also Aura swordsmen who were using Aura to illuminate the darkness, and those who were using magic artifacts. Nonetheless, no matter how many times they looked, they couldn't see the enemy anywhere. Just where is he? They didn't understand how someone next to them had disappeared without even making a sound. Far away from them, there was a man who was covered by darkness. The judgment of the Hector kingdom is bolder than I expected. I was initially planning to take full advantage of the guerrilla operation as they focused their attacks on the defense lines, but they decided to block a variable first. Who is their leader? The judgment he has made, from the surprise attack to capturing Warpgate, is enough to prove he is not an ordinary person. He suppressed his laughter. Seeing how Hector had reacted to this extreme situation, Roman didn't panic because of the enemy's smartness, but felt a fire rise up in his heart. He could see lights all over the mountain. That meant that instead of leading only one battalion to search and deal with the remnants, the enemy commander had decided to bring all the forces he could to deal with the remnants and left only a minimal number of troops who were pressuring the defense lines even now. The southern mountain range is steep, and it is a terrain where there are limited places to hide. The commander of the Hector Kingdom was perfectly aware of that, and he decided to boldly abandon the areas where the remnants couldn't hide and only initiated the search in the other areas. His judgment is amazing. Actually, even Roman's troops were there at the places the enemy commander had selected, but still, the Hector Kingdom hadn't expected one variable. They didn't know what kind of person Roman Dimitri was. The rugged mountains and blinding darkness were factors that didn't let anyone see even an inch ahead. They limited the movements of both sides, but Roman Dimitri, who had lived as Beck Jung. Hyuk, was able to move freely in the dark. It's been a long time since I felt this kind of feeling. How to fight using the darkness, most people thought that Beck Jung. Hyuk was someone who always fought his enemies head. On. Nevertheless, the truth was quite different. Back when Beck Jung. Hyuk didn't have power to meet his father's expectations, he had to adapt to living in the gloomy darkness. At that time, there was a name Beck Jung. Hyuk earned and was frequently called the Shadow Ghost. He was just like the shadow of a ghost, something that no one could predict the actions of and see. Roman was calmly waiting for Hector's next decision. And when the darkness finally covered the entire mountain, it became the stage of Beck Jung. Hyuk, the heavenly demon, and the shadow ghost. Editor's thoughts. The shadow ghost has arrived. The stage has been set, and the prey is in the vicinity. It is time for another massacre for Hector. Also, that was an amazing cliffhanger lol. Chapter 94 The Shadow Ghost, 4, you are listening at novelfull.audio. Among the twelve sons of the heavenly demon, those who managed to survive the bottom point were then continuously tested for their abilities just because they were the sons of the heavenly demon. Beck Jung. Hyuk. You will stay in the Dark Demon Unit for a year from now. The Dark Demon was an assassination unit of the demonic sect. That unit was set as the stage to test Beck Jung. Hyuk out. Obviously, his older brothers were also given tasks one after another, and just like that, Beck Jung. Hyuk was ordered to assassinate a member of the sect. Actually, it wasn't that difficult. He only had to chase down a low dot level member who had caused trouble for the sect and escaped. Beck Jung. Hyuk was able to take his life only after three days after he had taken up the mission. The second mission was more difficult than the first one. The assassination target was a member of the forces of evil, and the rumors said he was quite abusive and violent. Beck Jung. Hyuk went to him immediately and asked for a duel. The duel was quite fierce. The warrior of the forces of evil was able to push back Beck Jung. Hyuk without himself being pushed back. 
Nonetheless, his head was cut off because of a single mistake. Baek Jung Dot Hyuk finished the second mission even faster than the first one. And when the members of the sect saw him return so soon, they commented he was talented enough to run the unit itself. Nevertheless, his third mission was to assassinate the leader of an orthodox sect. Obviously, Baek Jung Dot Hyuk had no chance of winning against him in a face dot to dot face confrontation. Unlike how he had dealt with the warrior in the second mission, he couldn't fight openly this time. Also, as he was ordered to finish the mission in less than a week, Baek Jung Dot Hyuk had no choice but to choose another method. That was the point when Baek Jung Dot Hyuk began to learn about the darkness. He continuously followed the sect leader while keeping himself hidden. Once he had grasped all of the sect leader's routines, he attempted to assassinate him. The plan was perfect. The sect leader had never thought that the assassin would be hiding below the toilet, and he met a humble end like that. In the mission, Baek Jung Dot Hyuk was absolutely faithful to reality in order to survive. As time went on, he came to be known as the strongest of the Dark Demon unit and preferred fighting his enemies face dot to dot face, but when he had no strength to stand up while facing his enemies, he knew how to hide in the shadows and used his assassination techniques to the fullest. That was a separate issue from pride. If Baek Jung Dot Hyuk had been a person who held his pride up high from the start, he would have died at the beginning of the tests themselves. As time passed, Baek Jung Dot Hyuk killed a lot of people. In the process, he mastered the assassination techniques and didn't choose any other means to carry out his missions. Finally, after one year, the shadow ghost of the demonic sect had killed 38 masters of Murim. A saying originated because of that, one cannot avoid death the moment they become the target of the shadow ghost. That was the secret of Roman Dimitri, something the current people didn't know about. While explaining this operation, when he mentioned that he would face the Hector kingdom alone, almost all of Roman soldiers protested. Absolutely not. This does not mean I question my liege's abilities. As it is my liege we are talking about, I am certain that you can produce results with your skill. Nevertheless, the number of troops of the enemy is too large. The Hector kingdom has prepared for a full dot scale war with its current troops. Even if our liege is someone who is unlikely to get hurt while dealing with Hector, we have no choice but to worry about the worst as we are your soldiers, said Chris. Unlike Kevin, who was calm, Chris was trying to stop Roman with an exasperated voice. The other soldiers were no different. Even the newcomer, McBurney, had the same opinion as Chris. That is an impossible mission. The southern mountains are too steep. It may seem like you can deal with many enemies with a small number of troops, using the terrain as an advantage at first glance, but it isn't that easy. It's because of the limited mobility in this terrain. And since there are very few mountain trails around which human passage is possible, it will be easy for the enemies to pursue you. Please, think again. He couldn't seem to accept Roman's plan. Actually, with less than 200 troops, it didn't even make any sense to try and deal with the Hector Kingdom. Nevertheless, Roman decided to stick to his plan, which was beyond everyone else's common sense. What he needed now wasn't persuasion and changing others' common sense, but blind faith and his soldiers following the plan. If you believe in me, follow this plan. That was it. As soon as he heard those few words, Chris went silent. New people like McBurney still couldn't accept it, but all those who followed Roman were different. Who was Roman Dimitri? He was a man who was beyond the common sense of others. In the process of Roman annihilating the Barco family, and even when he dealt with the Blood Fong, they hadn't seen only one or two parts that didn't make sense. And now, Roman had appeared by himself in front of his enemies. As he saw the torches rushing in from all directions, he, once again, surrendered himself to the pitch-dot-black darkness. Crackle. All of Hector's soldiers lit their torches and moved to and fro to find Roman with the help of the illuminated torches, but they still couldn't find him. The Shadow King's martial arts started with becoming one with the darkness. Baek Jung Dot Hyuk had learned that in the library of the demonic sect back when he was known as the Shadow Ghost. 
The Shadow King was a person who had left a mark in the history of Murim. At first, he was only a simple thief, but he later learned to use the darkness to his advantage and eventually turned into a tyrant known as the Great Thief. Since then, the value of the things he stole continued to change. Rather than aiming for the pockets of the wealthy, he moved on to the sects and clans of Murim. He stole from those in the five great clans, such as the Namgung and Juga clans, from those in the forces of evil, and even dared to set foot in the Hundred Thousand Mountains. If he hadn't tried to move up from there, the Shadow King would have been able to live like a legend. Nonetheless, fascinated by the abilities, he came to covet the treasure of the heavenly demon, and when he tried to steal it, he met a horrible end. The invincibility of Shadow King was mainly because he always assimilated into the darkness. Even if he was right in front of the face of someone, it was difficult to discern that, and even when he stepped on leaves, no sound could be heard. He was truly a perfect hider. When the place that had been illuminated with the fire from the torch until just a moment ago became colored with darkness, Roman moved there. And, quack. Quack, he attacked the enemy by surprise. The sword that came down from the darkness wasn't something anyone could easily react to, and the soldiers of Hector only remained wide-eyed as they coughed up blood. This. Enemy. The enemy is here. Fweet. The whistle rang loudly. They were already aware that the enemy was nearby, so they narrowed the formation around the dead soldier, but Roman had already escaped the moment he heard the whistle blow. Quack. Ack. Soon, screams began to be heard from everywhere. It was from those who were trying to surround Roman earlier. They had thought they had reacted quite quickly, but Roman seemed to appear from all sides and provoke all of them at once. It was a totally new movement. Hector's soldiers looked around frantically, but while they were trying to protect each other by closing the gap, Roman managed to aim for the gap that was eventually created. Slowly. One by one. The Hector kingdom had set foot on the mountain that was covered in darkness. They would have thought that the darkness wouldn't have been a big problem for them, but they couldn't even see Roman's movements even though they were relying on the light from the torches. The Shadow King's martial arts didn't turn his body invisible. Instead, it made him assimilate into the darkness by using the energy around him. Nevertheless, his experience of living as the Shadow Ghost was what helped him the most. The knights of Hector were pissed off. They were those who knew how to use Aura and had taken the lead, but Roman continued to aim for their blind spots even then. Still, he wasn't moving hastily. The moment they moved away even a little from the line, Roman sent them to the afterlife. As he was blocking the noise with mana, even though a colleague right next to him had died, the enemy did not notice it. The Hector kingdom didn't know that right now, there was only one enemy they were facing, and he was moving by himself in the darkness. The plan isn't to annihilate all the enemies at once. Nonetheless, killing as many as I can is something I cannot overlook. They will soon start to regret ever stepping foot in this mountain, which is covered in pitch dot black darkness. The night was long. And most likely, the enemy would soon begin to hope that the sun would rise quickly. A night of Hector, Thompson, gulped. His hands and legs were trembling because of what was going on around him. What the hell is happening? He couldn't understand the situation that was happening right in front of him. Obviously, an enemy was aiming for them from all around, but no matter how much he tried, he couldn't even feel the presence of the enemy, let alone see him. There. Move quickly. He could only hear the voices of the soldiers, and everyone's rank didn't seem to matter now. Whenever they heard the sound of choking and the death of a colleague, all of Hector's soldiers rushed like crazy toward the source of the sound. The battalion commanders couldn't even control them. When a colleague, who was staying alert right next to them, began to die, anger and fear both intertwined and halted the judgment of the soldiers. Nevertheless, quack. Quack. The number of corpses only kept on increasing. Even though thousands of soldiers were searching for the enemy, the shadow of death didn't even show its face to them before it took their lives. Because of that, 
they were feeling a kind of fear they couldn't even put into words. Their faces were dyed with terror. Thompson, unable to predict just how many enemies were lurking in the darkness, raised his sword with a tense expression. Beads of cold sweat continued to drop down his head. He had not left his position yet. He moved slowly, and unlike other soldiers, he was focusing on his own safety rather than looking for the enemy. And finally, Thompson saw it. At the rear of the formation, soldiers who were moving began to disappear one by one. Swish. A lit torch went out. Instead of seeing the soldier's death, he had only seen the torch vanish. Nevertheless, he just assumed that the soldier had died, as his common sense couldn't allow him to think of anything else. And as expected, a soldier who later noticed his colleague missing whistled as soon as he could, and all the soldiers with lit torches rushed toward that place instantly. And, swish. Once again, another torch on another side vanished. Thompson took a step back. When he saw just how many torches had vanished, he realized something had gone terribly wrong. He had thought that the Hector Kingdom had the obvious advantage, but the current situation couldn't even be said to represent the, uh, of advantage. Dot just then, the commander. The commander of the 1st Battalion is dead. As soon as he heard about the death of the commander, Thompson felt his feet were on fire. Although there were so many soldiers around the commander, even he had died. It felt like the common sense he had built up was being denied. He was clearly looking around carefully, but the moment he blinked, the entire scenery changed. This makes no sense. He ran toward the commander, but instead of picking up the commander's body, he picked up the magic call artifact that was on him. And, Commander Edwin. A ghost has appeared here. Please help us. If we stay here like this any longer, we will all die. That was a voice that shocked the people on the other end of the call. No. It was more like a scream for help. Editor's thoughts. The assassination techniques are here. Edwin needs to send support quickly if he doesn't want all his troops in the vicinity of Roman to die. Nonetheless, will they be able to stop Roman with support? It was quite interesting to see a part of Roman's life in Murin. Edwin's next decision will be interesting as well. Chapter 95 The Shadow Ghost, 5, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Away from the area where a massacre was taking place, once Edwin heard the voice of the Thompson on the magic call, he said firmly, Calm down, Thompson. The enemies are at a numerical disadvantage, and they can only use the darkness to attack. So, be wary of your surroundings and calmly explain the situation to me. The enemy has appeared in the area that was assigned to the 1st Company of the 2nd Battalion. However, no matter how many times we tried, the enemy could not be seen. On the other hand, the soldiers of Hector are turning into corpses with each passing second. Still, there isn't even a trace of the enemy visible to us. Commander. H. How do we deal with this? There is nothing we can do against a formless ghost. Thompson's voice continued to tremble as he continued to speak. Thus, even though he could not see his face, Edwin understood Thompson was quite pale. Thompson is an aura knight. He can even find the smallest traces because his senses are far more developed than any ordinary soldier. So, no matter how dark it may be, how is that possible? No, it is impossible. Edwin Hector's judgment wasn't that wrong for any normal aura swordsman. They had eyes that could even pierce through the darkness. Their eyes, once covered with mana, could determine the location of the enemy even in darkness. That was why Edwin had made the decision to climb the mountain even though the sun was setting. Then, why was Roman Dimitri still not found? From the magic call, it was clear that the first company was currently all over the place, and the remnants of Cairo were around there on the mountain. Are they using magic? No, that's not it. Although there are different types of magic that can make one invisible and even hide them in the open, in the end, Roman Dimitri is only an aura swordsman. As he is not a magician, he cannot use magic to hide himself. Then, a one. 
Time skill. It takes quite some time to use it, but it would prove him acting like a ghost in the darkness, as Thompson had said. Nonetheless, the soldiers of Hector are trying to follow him even while others are dying. It means that he has shown himself at least once. But if the one dot time use is over, how can he disappear so soon and attack again? Edwin couldn't understand Roman Dimitri. The more he got to know about him, the more he felt like he was drowning in a bottomless sea. Edwin Hector had experienced many situations in his life till now, but this war has put him to the test from time to time. He couldn't find an answer. Nevertheless, he said in an unwavering voice, as time goes on, the enemy will inevitably reach the limit of his physical strength. From the current calculations, the number of soldiers who have joined Roman Dimitri is less than 200. Thompson. Do not be fooled by the darkness. It is an overwhelmingly advantageous fight, and if you respond calmly, you can definitely find out the enemy. I will begin to lead my troops there. If you all cover each other around the point where the enemy first attacked and shone light by using the magic flare, the enemy will have no way to escape. The situation is favorable for Hector, that was the conclusion Edwin had reached after calculating things thoroughly. Rather than being swayed by the horror which had unfolded in front of Hector, he looked at the reality, even though the situation was harsh. The signal on the device proved the message was sent to the other side. Nonetheless, just as he was about to move his troops, C. Commander. The ghost of Cairo is after me. From the device, Edwin heard the despair. Filled voice of Thompson. Whoosh! Thompson hurriedly raised his sword and looked around. The soldiers close to him were disappearing as if they were never there. And as he saw the darkness gradually approaching him, he was convinced that he had become the target of the ghost of Cairo. Listen to me now, all soldiers of the first company. Form a defense formation and keep the positions of each other in check. The enemy is after our lives. Do not be sucked into the darkness. Stand back dot to dot back and fend off the attacks. Thompson shouted out loud. His arms were currently trembling. Even though he was an Aura Knight, someone who had reached the level of superhumans, something normal people could never even approach or even think of touching, he now realized that, in the end, he was still only human. There is not only one company here. Since all the allies are close to each other, a defense formation can be easily formed, and with that, the enemy will be completely surrounded in the next three minutes at the earliest. Thus, there is no need to be afraid. As the commander said, this situation is in our favor. Gulp. He hadn't cut the magic call yet. He had fixed it to his waist, so that even if a problem occurred, he could deliver the news to his prince as soon as possible. And just then, F.S. Hitch. A fire torch suddenly vanished. That was about five meters from where Thompson was, and this time, he managed to see the soldier being dragged into the darkness. He had seen it clearly this time. Soon, the dark presence appeared right before him. Thompson raised his mana as much as he could. This is the only chance. Song. The aura exploded and seemed to cover everything before him. He even swung the sword toward the area where the soldier had disappeared so that the enemy wouldn't be able to escape this time. Slash. The wind split sideways. Surprisingly, there was no feeling of something being cut by the sword. Thompson thought he had clearly seen the enemy's movements, but the only thing he now saw in his vision was the corpse of the soldier who had disappeared. Then, Thompson saw it. The soldier had died without even being able to close his eyes. His expression turned ghastly pale seeing the terrifying sight. This. He just noticed that he had moved one step ahead. That meant he had left the defense formation. As even that was too much of a gap in front of a monster, Thompson hurriedly pulled back his sword and tried to go back to the formation. And at that moment, his entire body turned stiff. From the pitch dot black space, a being covered in black walked out. Yes, it was Roman Dimitri. And his face, now exposed in the moonlight, was stained with the blood of the soldiers he had killed till now. 
sometimes this happens when hiding in the dark and hunting the enemies. At the terrifyingly cold voice, Thompson couldn't even scream. While it seemed that Roman wasn't moving his sword and wasn't in a form that would allow him to attack quickly, the blood dripping down his sword told Thompson to not even try to attack him. All the hair on his body had stood up because of the terrifying gaze. Thompson prepared for the surprise attack that Roman would eventually unleash by maximizing the aura to defend against it. CK When Roman stepped on the leaves, a sound was heard. Quite surprisingly, he had not heard that even a single time yet from the being in the darkness, but when he had appeared in front of his eyes, he was finally able to confirm that the existence in front of him was a human being. Roman said, the enemy was invisible to the eyes. Still, you had the illusion that if you just found the enemy, you would be able to win. And obviously, you, who had been frightened till then, jumped into the darkness as soon as you saw me. Why did you make such a mistake? Did you really think that if you found me, you could defeat me easily? Glance. Thompson looked around hurriedly. The soldiers were farther than he had expected. In the end, he accepted that in order to survive, he had to believe in himself. Let's try it out. He covered his ears so as to not be fooled by the meaningless words. And while Roman was approaching him slowly, as soon as he came into his range, he kicked the ground as hard as he could. Tap. Die. The attack was quite fast. He had unleashed all of his aura at once. It was aura that transcended the damage a human body could take and seemed as if it would cut through Roman's body at once. But, that was just an illusion. Thompson had thought that his attack had worked, but soon, a burning pain struck him and made him realize how wrong he was. Slash. Quack. The blood splattered on the ground. Thompson also collapsed because of the excruciating pain as his chest had been slashed horrifyingly with only one blow. Thompson finally understood that he could never defeat Roman Dimitri on his own. And even though his chest was in such a horrifying situation that he was feeling a pain he had never felt, he jumped and ran away without looking back. Somehow, his desire to survive was holding him together. And he knew that to survive, he had to run away as fast as he could. Thompson began to scream and yell to inform his allies of the situation, but somehow, his voice didn't seem to reach them, as if a silence magic had been cast. Soon, trip. He lost his balance because of a new horrifying pain. That was because Roman's sword had cut through Thompson's Achilles tendon. When he tried to put his hand over it to try and stop the bleeding, even his hand was cut off from his wrist. Dot tap. Seeing his hand on the floor, Thompson's face turned into that of a corpse. He tried to drag himself with one hand while shaking and trembling because of the terror that was spread throughout all of his body, but Roman was already ahead of him when he looked back in front. Thompson closed his eyes and accepted his death when he saw Roman stretching his hand toward him. Unexpectedly, he didn't kill Thompson. Instead, he checked his waist and pulled out the magic communicator that was attached to it. He then brought it close to his mouth. Can you hear my voice? Roman had finally found Hector's commander, who was on the other side of the call. Strangely, he didn't receive a reply from the other side. He had clearly heard Thompson talking to him a few moments ago, but now, there was only a bone-chilling silence on the magic communicator. Roman continued, I know what you all are thinking. You made a plan to attack the southern front and distracted the attention toward the front lines while aiming to occupy the warp gate simultaneously. Maybe it is not a plan that was made in a day or two. Although Cairo was careless, your plan was still close to perfect. But why did you try so hard to occupy the southern front? Why on earth did the Hector Kingdom risk the lives of their people, who are starving to death due to the unprecedented famine, to occupy the southern front, a place that wouldn't have given that much profits anyway. The fire torches were still burning brightly. The soldiers were also continuing to try to find Roman, but no one could even see him. There can only be one answer to that. You wanted to solve the problem of your nation through a war. 
It's clear as crystal that you are trying to make a huge deal with the royal family of Cairo by taking the southern front hostage. If that isn't the reason, there is no reason for Hector to do this. The reason the soldiers of the Hector kingdom remained in the rear and were preparing a fortress was to show that Hector was a huge threat to the royal family of Cairo. Smirk. The plan of the enemy was quite perfect, but because of Roman being on the southern front, their quite perfect plan had now burned down to the ground. The problem is that I figured out the plan. You people don't have much time left. Because Hector doesn't have that many supplies, no matter how long Hector tries, it cannot last more than three months here on the southern front. I have no intention of letting you, the troops of Hector, do what you want. I will endure until the end, and I will continue to crush the plans of Hector as well. Roman had contacted them intentionally. The Hector kingdom had little time. They had gone through a lot of trial and error to reduce the margin of error, and they had chosen to occupy the warp gate so that they could end the war quickly. Surprisingly, the close dot to dot perfect plan had now exposed their weakness. If Roman hadn't mentioned the weakness, they would have thought they still had time to act and contact their nation, but the troops of Hector were being pushed to the edge now. Anyway, there is no other option for the Hector kingdom. Because of this call, the truth they have been trying to ignore will make them impatient. The troops of Hector would finally realize that they could not continue and ignore the existence of Roman now. As he was a being who understood their intentions so clearly, how the hell could they continue to negotiate with the royal family of Cairo if Roman stayed alive? If the variable, Roman, wasn't dealt with soon, their plan would crumble like a sandcastle on a beach. With this, my goal has been achieved. Whether the opponent gave up, retreated, or even fought until the end, Roman had now become an unavoidable variable for them. Because of the call, the troops of Hector would surely become impatient and make mistakes. Just then, are you Roman Dimitri? Edwin Hector, the man who had been silent until now, finally responded. Editor's Thoughts This chapter was so amazing. Roman continues to be ruthless and even provokes Hector. This has become quite interesting. Let's see what Edwin has to say. Also, Edwin now needs to use all his troops to try and deal with Roman lol. Maybe we will get the POV of Roman soldiers soon. That should be good. Chapter 96 The Shadow Ghost, 6, you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Edwin Hector continued, I'm not going to deny it. As is widely known, the Hector Kingdom is experiencing a terrible famine, and other countries are unwilling to provide any more money. That is why we launched an attack on the Cairo Kingdom. We had no choice but to make that decision in order to liberate ourselves from the shackles of debt. Are you asking me to sympathize with that? No. What I'm trying to convey is how desperate we are. In this war, the fate of the entire Hector Kingdom is at stake. There aren't even enough soldiers. We will experience a food shortage in around three months, as you stated. Nonetheless, we will not back down. I have no intention of backing down until I obtain what I want, even if Hector has to dig out vegetables from the mountain soil or consume the remains of a deceased comrade. It was a bone-chilling statement. Edwin Hector's attitude was resolute enough to even speak of cannibalism as something normal, even though it was something no one should have to experience if they were human beings. On a certain day, Edwin Hector went to a temple. The state of the Hector kingdom was truly miserable. The ground, which had been dyed golden in the past, was now torn apart due to the severe drought, and children, whose ribs could be seen sticking out on their skin, were staring at the ground. When they saw Edwin, they held out their bare palms and begged him for food. Why did it turn out like this? Edwin Hector, who was troubled every day as he was a person who had inherited the bloodline of the royals, began to think about a plan to attack the Cairo kingdom. It was exactly as Roman had expected. His words of the Hector kingdom being on the edge of destruction were correct. They would have fallen down soon enough, even if they hadn't initiated a war. You know my plans, so you must know how I feel. 
tell the Cairo royal family. If they do not accept the offer, we will fight until the end to get what we want. Do not think time is on your side. If we can't get anything through this land, we will spread the poison that a necromancer, cursed Hector with everywhere on the southern front and turn it into a land of death as well. Edwin had turned the situation around and was trying to bring Roman to the edge as well. He had no intention of returning empty. Handed right from the start. I am Edwin Hector. As the prince of the Hector kingdom, I am ready to do anything to save my people. Roman Dimitri. What choice will you make? Will you fall down like the Hector kingdom, which has come to the edge of the cliff of destruction, or make a compromise for the future? To Cairo, Edwin was surely a savage villain. However, that didn't matter to him. He would do anything to save his kingdom. The choice is up to Cairo. To Edwin Hector, that was the role one who was born into the royal family had to bear. The enemy had revealed his name. He was Edwin Hector, who was also known as the Star of Hector. While Roman was researching the Hector kingdom, that name had come up frequently. Unlike his incompetent father, he has grown into becoming the backbone of Hector kingdom because of his outstanding abilities. From a young age, he was involved in the small and huge affairs of the Hector kingdom and solved numerous problems, and eventually, those who admired the child began to call him the Star of Hector. Even though Hector was in the midst of a great famine, various nations, such as Kronos, wished to get their children married to Edwin Hector. He is a talent that has been recognized both inside and outside his nation. And such a being has taken up the baton in this war. As he had expected, this war wasn't being led by an ordinary person. And because of the bold systematic judgment that Roman saw, even he had no choice but to acknowledge the ability of Edwin Hector. The cause was clear now, Edwin was following his role as someone of the royal bloodline. He knew that Hector wouldn't back down so easily, but Roman wasn't an ordinary person either. Quack. Quack. What are you doing? Roman had thrust his sword into the thigh of Thompson. And thanks to the sound being cut off, no one else was able to hear it. Roman strongly suppressed Thompson's body, which was writhing in pain, and slowly twisted the sword to make him scream even more. What am I doing? As you can hear, I stabbed him in the thigh with my sword. I'd rather have you kill him. No matter how much we are enemies now, why are you torturing him? Why am I torturing him? You are making quite an emotional statement. I have no interest in the affairs of the Hector Kingdom. No matter the reason, the Hector Kingdom crossed the border and slaughtered the innocent soldiers of Cairo. So why are you shouting like a coward now that one of your soldiers got stabbed in the thigh? Don't misunderstand. Just as you care about the soldiers of Hector, my people are important to me. Then why should I show mercy to my enemies? The war has just begun. And you, who crossed the line in the first place, should not expect me to do anything a normal human would do. Edwin Hector had made a huge mistake. Roman Dimitri was not a normal person. No matter what the reasons or choices of the other people were, he only did what he believed to be right. Quack. Ha. Ah. Thompson yelled in pain. The pain of his bone being pierced wasn't something he could suppress, no matter how hard he tried. Thus, he screamed. Roman didn't know Thompson. Although he had no malice toward him, he continued to torture him because they were enemies right now. In the world where the weak served as food for the strong, this was quite normal. No matter what values the other one had or whatever justice they pursued, from the moment they recognized each other as enemies and showed hostility, both sides did everything they could to defeat the other person. And because of that, Roman didn't have any complicated thoughts. He had no intention of backing down despite Edwin Hector's threats, so he tortured Thompson. A lot of blood splattered. Because of that, even Roman's face was now drenched in blood. Then, Roman showed his fierce red eyes as he grabbed Thompson. As you do your duty, I will also do what I believe to be right. So, do not get caught by me. I will kill all those who crossed the border quite painfully. 
I will not spare a single one of Hector's soldiers, and even if you choose to run away while waving a white flag, I will follow you until the end and stick my sword in your back. My name is Roman Dimitri, and I will definitely make you pay the price for the reason that you touched my people, and not for any grand cause, like you have. Roman showed clear hostility. The Hector kingdom didn't know. The moment they crossed the border, they had touched someone they should never have. As he knew that the Hector kingdom would have set up multiple camps already, Roman decided that if they didn't surrender, he would continue to send a chill up their spines. Quack. Ugh. Finally, he thrust his sword into the neck of Thompson. Edwin Hector only stood silent when he heard the sound of one of his soldiers dying. When Thompson's head finally dropped, Roman continued, if you choose to resist the warning, we will meet soon. Once he finished his words, Roman coldly cut off the magic call. After the magic call was cut, Edwin Hector was only standing coldly while suppressing his anger beneath his expression. Roman Dimitri. He is a more dangerous person than I thought. Any ordinary person would have stepped back with the number of threats Edwin had given. Even though saying something like, we will kill you even if we have to go down with you, couldn't be done by any ordinary person, the reaction of Roman was even stronger than that. He killed Thompson slowly while torturing him and sending his screams through the magic call. Although Roman knew what his circumstances were in his cause, he still sent Thompson's death as a warning. Roman was definitely a dangerous being. Knowing that he would lose the moment he retreated by even a single step, Roman Dimitri was constantly pressuring him and not allowing him to rest even for a while. He was the kind of person one would never want to meet as an enemy. The only variable that had occurred in the perfect plan which was made by Edwin Hector had now grown incomparably. What will you do? Jackson asked. He was listening to their conversation right from start to finish. Especially when Thompson was being tortured, he could not control his emotions, and his face looked so angry that it would explode at any moment. Edwin Hector said, if the Hector Kingdom had continued to spend time without making a decision, eventually, the entire Hector Kingdom would have died and lost the meaning of being a kingdom. Thus, I made a decision. All warriors who would give their life for the Hector Kingdom and leftover funds were mobilized for this war. Jackson, we can never retreat. For those who remain in Hector now, the reward we will bring them is more important than our survival. That was the harsh reality. Nevertheless, it was a burden Edwin Hector had to bear. Even if a lot of people died, others could not help but feel grateful to be alive themselves. Humans were like that. And even though he knew that, Edwin Hector carried the burden. Taking all responsibility for the war, he left for the battlefield on behalf of the king. We cannot go back empty. Handed. Mobilize all the troops right now and form a siege on the location where Roman Dimitri appeared. And if you manage to capture him alive, I will cut the flesh of Roman Dimitri slowly myself to avenge the death of Thompson. Seeing Edwin's anger and sincerity, Jackson nodded, I will obey your order. Even if he died in this war, Jackson would never regret the decision of following Edwin Hector. Dovico the operation was now changed. Hector's aura swordsman took the lead. Follow me. They all had received an order from Edwin Hector ten minutes ago. I will no longer be swayed by the remnants of Cairo. From now on, even if we have to make sacrifices, we will punish those beings hiding in the dark. The Aura Swordsman will take the lead and light the way, and when attacked, soldiers from other areas will surround the enemy at once. It is a battle in which we need to overwhelm our enemies. We will give our flesh and take the bones of the enemy. He made his decision. The moment Roman Dimitri revealed himself, with a single attack, the troops would boldly block him and any escape route that Roman could use to escape. It was a strategy that required sacrifices. Being Edwin Hector, he wanted to produce the maximum results with minimum damage, but he changed his mind when he heard how hostile Roman was to him. He had acknowledged his opponent. And in order to catch that monster, he determined that soldiers had to walk in with determination. A bright light shone from the leading aura swordsman, thanks to the magical artifact. 
The magical artifact generated light when it was supplied with mana, and enemies that touched that light would be temporarily exposed due to the shimmering shards of light covering them. It was a trap to maximize the effect of Edwin's plan. Because of supplying the artifact with mana, the Aura Swordsmen would not be able to exert their full strength, but someone had to risk their life to bring Roman out in the open. And for that, the Swordsmen of Hector decided to risk their lives. They had a strong desire to win this battle, even if they had to become the bait to kill the enemy. Their eyes were fierce. There is no one out here. Follow me slowly, shouted the Aura Knight. As he had taken the lead, the troops of Hector rushed ahead with confident faces. When they were convinced that the unknown fear had been resolved, the search operation that was slow became full of energy again. Nevertheless, it was too early for that. The moment they stepped into the space where no one could be seen, the space twisted, and something reflected light toward them. Slash. The Aura Knights widened their eyes, seeing the blood flowing out uncontrollably, and eventually fell down on the ground. Soon, Cairo's soldiers, who were nowhere to be seen, suddenly appeared out of what seemed like a mirage and rushed in all at once. Attack. Attack the enemies. Chris shouted while his neck veins were protruding. When they all had first entered the mountain, Roman Dimitri had foreseen that this would be the case. Editor's thoughts. What a cliffhanger. Chris and the soldiers have begun their counterattack now. Roman Dimitri has warned Edwin. How will the Aura Knights fare against Chris, Kevin, and the other soldiers of Roman? That should be seen in the. Anyway, go, Roman soldiers. Chapter 97 The Unexperienced World, 1, You Are Listening at NovelFull.audio When Kevin first heard the plan, he watched Chris and others arguing silently, and only asked a question after he conveyed that he was going to follow Roman's plan. What do we need to do? This war wasn't something Roman could handle alone. It was a good plan for Roman to use the mountain terrain and darkness to deal with the enemy, but the 200 troops had nothing to do in the meantime. Nevertheless, Kevin wanted to be in the plan of Roman. Chris was no different. Thus, when Kevin asked the important question, Chris added, Right. I agree that the liege can conduct the operation by himself. The liege already has the ability to pull that off, and we, who cannot keep up with the liege, will inevitably pull you down. But that doesn't mean we can leave everything to you, my liege. Even if you have to use us as bait, please put us to some use. Those were words full of concern. Nevertheless, from the start, Roman had every intention to use as much power as he could. From now on, let me briefly explain the operation. SHK. He opened a map. It was the map that McBurney had given him. Although it was small, Roman deliberately pulled out that map and pointed out the area at the start of the mountain. This operation is divided into three phases. In the first phase, I will use my mobility to deal with Hector's remnants. Since the Hector kingdom is preoccupied with attacking the front defense line, dealing with them in the meantime won't be an issue. In the second phase, if the Hector kingdom sees my existence as a thorn in their eyes and sends a unit to pursue me, I will lure them to the mountain. And perhaps they will try to take advantage of the overwhelming difference in our numbers and try to deal with me at once. Still, I will prolong the battle, and when the sun sets and darkness covers the mountain, I will use my skills to corner them. Now, only the last phase was left. The final touch. Roman understood that as soon as they got pissed, even if it was impossible, the Hector Kingdom would pursue him like crazy and make mistakes. From then on, we enter the third phase. A surprise attack using the terrain. That is your role. Once the third phase was told, the soldiers understood it was a simple plan. They had to dig a trap, wait, and make a surprise attack on the disorganized enemies. Actually, since it was an operation anyone could think of, the soldiers understood it even though Roman had only told them about it briefly. A surprise attack in the mountains will yield clear results. Nevertheless, from the moment we appear in front of them, we will not be free from the pursuit of the Hector Kingdom. 
The difference between Hector and us is too large, and it is virtually impossible to successfully make a surprise attack and escape without any damage. Nevertheless, as it is the command of my liege, I will do it. No one mentioned the risk this operation had. Everyone was thinking the same thing, Roman Dimitri was going to face hundreds or even thousands of enemies by himself, then how could they act like cowards and mention the risks of the surprise attack? Even if they had to die, it was their choice, and being the soldiers of Roman, they had decided to follow him until the end. Naturally, the feeling spread like a plague, and soldiers who followed McBurney and Stephen only remained silent. Their strong will looked quite amazing. Roman was grateful for the soldiers who were ready to dedicate their lives to him, but he wasn't the kind of person who would make meaningless sacrifices. It seems like you all are misunderstanding something. The point of this surprise attack is to reduce the number of enemies while minimizing the damage. That is impossible. The Hector Kingdom will surely form a defense formation and continue to search for us. And unless we kill everyone with the surprise attack, we will be grabbed by the tails when Hector discovers our position. You don't have to say anything to give us hope, my liege. We all are already ready to lay our lives down for our liege, said Chris. Even though he was following Roman for a purpose, he was truly loyal to him. Roman said, no, there is a way to not get grabbed by the tails. In an old book, by chance, I found something along the lines of, there are infinite ways to use mana, and depending on how it is used, one can bring Mother Nature on the side of humans. Then, during my stay in Dimitri, after a lot of trial and error, I discovered a new branch of Mother Nature. The soldiers couldn't understand what Roman meant. Thus, to make them understand the path of nature, Roman took a step forward and began to collect things like rocks and branches from the ground. It might not be visible to your eyes, but unlike the other stones and twigs, these ones contain a lot of mana. Actually, it is quite less when compared to human standards. But if they are systematically positioned in the right manner, the power of mana that goes against the path of Mother Nature will twist the space. Tack. He placed the stones on the floor. He then took a few steps forward and placed a branch there. What is he doing? Seeing him repeat the same thing, which was quite weird, a few times, everyone had the same question. Where is he going with this? The questions didn't seem to stop, but just then, the moment when Roman put down the last stone, I have decided to call this the true defense circle. Dot. Swish. A light breeze blew, and Roman's figure disappeared like a mirage. Everyone was stunned. They felt like all their senses had stopped working. He was right in front of them just a moment ago, but now, he was nowhere to be seen. They finally became sure. With Roman Dimitri's method, they could attack their enemies safely. And obviously, Roman's plan had worked. Attack. Fire the arrows. Papak. The arrows were fired straight ahead. Even if one wasn't a sharpshooter, they could easily hit the enemy at such a close range. And obviously, the soldiers of Hector soon began to die and fall to the ground. The attack was so quick that they couldn't even think of raising their shields to block it. The soldiers who had been training hard for this war went down in the chaos, and Chris, who had cut off the breath of the Aura swordsman with a single slash, didn't miss the opportunity to move forward. Tap. His sword flashed. As Chris was so fast that he wasn't even visible to the enemy soldiers, multiple heads soon flew into the air. And even though blood continued to gush out of their bodies like a fountain, Chris didn't stop. The moment he made the surprise attack, he decided he would grab the opportunity and push as hard as he could. Everyone, calm down. Strike back. Hector's knights responded. Among them, there were Aura swordsmen. Auras began to emerge from all directions and attacked Chris simultaneously, but he managed to avoid all the attacks. And then, quack. Quack. He attacked the enemy's vital points and sent them to the afterlife. When Chris defeated the three dot star Aura swordsman in the Battle of Great Warriors, he was born completely anew. 
He finally understood that the power of Aura wasn't everything, and he tried to become even stronger by training with Roman. The beads of sweat that had dropped down his body were enough to create a huge river. Since he couldn't absorb the teachings of Roman properly if he blinked even for a single moment and lost the flow, he would often stay up the entire night because of training and clung to even it even when he fainted. And the reward. Obviously, he got a huge reward, the lightning flash. It was a sword technique one of the top ten beings in Murim had learned by heart. Thus, Chris did his best and learned it by heart as well. And thanks to that, he was now unilaterally slaughtering Hector's knights. This is ridiculous. Where did this monster come from? The enemies were stunned. The opponent wasn't even Roman Dimitri. Still, they couldn't even hold a candle to him. Screams filled with pain continued to pour out each time Chris moved. Also, it wasn't just him. The power of the other soldiers of Roman wasn't any less. As they had learned the Azura sword technique, even though they were called normal soldiers, their combat power was way huge. It was literally overwhelming. After slaughtering numerous enemies in a short time, Chris retreated and shouted with a voice filled with mana, Retreat. Retreat. That was it. The troops of the Hector Kingdom couldn't come back to their senses initially because of the surprise attack, but soon, some of them whistled to signal the others. It was a signal that told the others that the situation had reversed. As he heard the sound of the reinforcements coming there, Chris ordered for retreat right away. They had managed to achieve quite a result already. Roman had already told them that this operation was not about killing all of the enemies, but harassing them while making sure they themselves were safe. We need to move to the next point. On this wide mountain, Roman had made several true defense circles. Roman understood the reality that they couldn't win against them head dot on, so he decided to attack only in favorable situations. All of Cairo's soldiers ran away like loaches. That was the end of the surprise attack. The soldiers of Hector tried to follow them, but Chris and the others had already disappeared by then. Simultaneously, battles were happening in other areas. Enemy. Stop them. Quack. Kevin had taken over the leading position of Cairo here. Kevin cut off the head of the enemy who was screaming because of being terrified of his actions and then quickly slaughtered the other enemies who still hadn't recovered from the shock. The aspect of the battle wasn't much different. As Roman intended, the Hector Kingdom tried to form a siege, even if it was unreasonable, and in the process, the defense lines of the enemy were disrupted. Actually, Hector still had the advantage if one followed common sense. Although it was obvious that the side with higher numbers would win in a war of attrition, Cairo's surprise attack didn't fall within Hector's common sense. Die, shouted one of Hector's aura swordsmen. Their exploding aura was the hope of Hector. And the aura swordsman, who was about to cut off his head, was rather killed by Kevin first. Roman soldiers often called Kevin the rapidly growing monster. Obviously, they didn't mean that he was stronger than Chris, but Kevin was actually faster at slaughtering enemies. In this operation, many people asked Roman questions. They were worried that Roman was going to face Hector's army all alone and that the operations around the mountains were dangerous. However, unlike Chris, who confirmed with evidence in every case, Kevin never asked Roman a question. It was because he trusted Roman Dimitri completely. As it was Roman Dimitri, who had grown so much stronger since the time he had met Kevin in the slums, even though it was beyond common sense, Kevin believed it was possible. That was because of blind trust. Roman's existence was the very driving force of Kevin. Chris and Kevin brought about the same result. They both slaughtered a lot of enemy soldiers in a short amount of time. Nevertheless, there was something different about Kevin. Clench. Quack. He caught the enemy who was trying to flee by the hair. Then, while dragging him on the ground, he stabbed the enemy countless times in the stomach. Still, those attacks weren't even aimed at vital points. He was doing so so that the other enemy soldiers would clearly hear the screams. He was inflicting pain on those he caught without mercy. 
and Hector's soldiers, who saw that, didn't even dare to approach Kevin. The Hector kingdom is our enemy. While standing by Roman's side, Kevin had always observed how he treated his enemies. In the fight with Barco, Roman had shown pure cruelty to them. And as Kevin had seen Roman do it, he also showed his enemies what fear was. I follow the values pursued by my leech. He didn't catch every single enemy that was escaping. After all, it took survivors to spread the fear to others. Kevin, who had deliberately left a few survivors, immediately sent a signal of retreat when he heard the sound of reinforcements rushing in. Chris, Kevin, Pookie, and Vulcan, they all had carried out the surprise attack simultaneously. Vulcan was the one who had first taken up the challenge when Roman was recruiting soldiers, and Pookie was someone who had succeeded in manifesting aura after training in Azura sword technique. They all had taken charge of one group each, and then, all four groups attacked at the same time. The operation was obviously successful. Just like Chris and Kevin unilaterally killed the enemies and ran away, they both also managed to do the same. And the news soon shocked the camp of Hector. Editor's Thoughts The soldiers of Roman have done such a good job. Kevin was so ruthless toward Hector, just like Roman. That was amazing lol. Let's see how Edwin Hector responds to Roman now. Chapter 98 The Unexperienced World, 2, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Kevin's intention worked. He had left one of the enemy soldiers alive on purpose. When that soldier finally reached Edwin Hector, his face was dyed with terror, and he trembled while revealing what he had experienced on the battlefield. C. Cairo's camp has magicians in it. They are suddenly appearing from the darkness, where no one should have been, and then started to attack us instantly. Please believe me. It wasn't a normal surprise attack like attacking after hiding in the bushes. Literally, as if it was all a mirage, they appeared from thin air, Nav Om all of his body was trembling while he was speaking. A demon had brutally killed his comrades. And whenever he remembered the face of Kevin, he kept checking to see if he was behind him. Commander. It seems like the enemy had set up a trap, remarked Jackson. Now, reports were coming that mentioned the enemy had attacked them from all sides. Even though they had the numerical advantage, they were unilaterally slaughtered, so there was a chance that what the soldier had said was true. Jackson. There is no magic that can completely hide someone in this world. There are some illusion-type magics that can show illusions, but the enemies carried out a surprise attack in at least five places simultaneously. The possibility of them using magic scrolls is quite low. The magic scrolls are strictly managed by the magic towers, so there is no way that the southern front can have them. Then, there is one more possibility, Cairo possessing an archmage. Still, how does that make any sense? Why would they put an archmage on the southern front rather than the western front? That's impossible. Right. That is impossible. That means what they used was not magic. Even a normal mage was several times more precious than an aura swordsman. Moreover, most of the mages were affiliated with the neutral organizations, the magic towers. Just like the Golden Bank, the Magic Towers were groups that worked for the benefit of the entire continent. It was well dot known that 9 out of 10 people, who were born with the talent of handling mana, hoped to be in one of the Magic Towers. The reason was simple. The Magic Towers were a literal treasure trove of knowledge, so if one wanted to grow as a mage, they had no choice but to go there. There were only a few mages in each country. That was why Edwin Hector couldn't understand why Cairo would put a great being like that on the southern front. There is something special about Roman Dimitri. He didn't oppose our attempt to capture the southern front instantly but lured us into the mountains with all preparations in place. Maybe this is a trick to buy time. The longer we will stay in the mountains, the more damage our troops will take. The southern front will also find a way to relax, and the moment the troops from Cairo's royal family arrive, the tide of this war will be turned around at once. Edwin looked at the entire chessboard and the quickly dot moving pieces. 
The battle here would be fatal, but Edwin Hector had no intention of retreating. The moment we retreat and lose our momentum, this war will be over. Instead of defeating the troops, if we focus on capturing the front defense line, will we be able to achieve the goal? No, it will be hard. Roman Dimitri would gain the reputation of defeating the Hector Kingdom's troops with only a small force, and that will surely give Cairo a justification to not give in to Hector's demands. War is driven by force and morale. The moment a hero named Roman Dimitri is born in this war, Hector will be died with defeat. It is too early to go head. On. Even though many soldiers were dying, he had a goal, saving the Hector Kingdom. Everyone had sworn to give their lives for that, and Edwin could not let their deaths be in vain. It's best to wait. Roman Dimitri will eventually fall into my trap. Just then, Roman Dimitri. He has appeared. He heard those words from the magic communicator. Roman Dimitri had finally begun to move. Swish. The darkness was gone. The moment the light from the magical artifact lit up the surroundings, the Aura Swordsman's face was colored in shock. Quack. Quack. Roman Dimitri was right in front of him. He appeared from the darkness and pushed the sword into his chest before he could even react. Eventually, he began to stagger. However, after he knelt down while blood was flowing out of his body, strangely, a smile spread across his face as he looked at Roman. Cough. W. That we finally got you. Flash. There was an aura explosion. His intensely boiling mana created bright light through the artifact. He was already ready to die. Still, before he lost consciousness, he hoped to place a bell on the neck of Roman in exchange for his death. Flash. Roman Dimitri. Roman Dimitri has appeared. Form a siege. The situation turned around quickly. It was quite different from before. That was because they didn't have any way to catch him as he hid and attacked from the darkness previously, but now, bright light was shining from Roman while he was moving. When the Aura Swordsman created an Aura Explosion, many fragments of light crystal shone all around and shot at many things. Some of them even managed to enter Roman's body, and even though he wasn't feeling any physical pain, his body was now shining brightly. The Aura Swordsman didn't die in vain. And the quickly changing situation, the captains also did their best and linked communications with each other. Roman Dimitri is moving toward the north. He just turned the other way. Second company. Second company. The rad is coming there. In an instant, a siege network was formed. Hector's soldiers systematically drove Roman back, and no matter how fast he was, he could not seem to get out of the siege. Until this moment, Edwin Hector was prepared for damage and had spread the soldiers far away. But the moment Roman Dimitri was found, Edwin made his men climb up quickly and pressured Roman from the vantage point. He was convinced this was the end. He had spread out an entire net to catch only Roman. And as time went on, the range of the net began to narrow, and finally, forces to face Roman began to emerge. In such a situation, the troops of the Hector Kingdom thought that finally, Roman Dimitri had been cornered. Many allies were lost because of only one person, but it was now only a matter of time before they dealt with the ghost that was haunting them. Edwin had stepped on Roman's tail. Hector's soldiers attacked all at once as soon as they saw Roman running away and trying to scatter the fragments of light crystals. Die. I will avenge my comrades. The soldiers rushed toward Roman Dimitri while being filled with madness. Roman was a demon who had killed countless of their comrades. The soldiers' eyes were dyed with fury when they remembered the memory of trembling in fear while not being able to sleep. Hook. Sharp weapons attacked Roman from all sides, and at that moment, Roman's body darkened. Instead of running away, he suddenly changed his direction and swung the sword at the soldiers. Quack. Blood splattered. The soldier's body was exposed because of his fury, and he was taken down with one swing. Still, he didn't stop as he began to cut down all who had attacked him. 
He was moving so fast that it was hard to see him with the naked eye. Thousands of soldiers' blood had splashed everywhere. Apparently, they were filled with so much hatred toward Roman that they weren't careful enough, and were slaughtered by him. Still. Chase him. Do not miss him. The chase had just begun. All the enemies were trying to bite his tail. Even if several comrades were cut down, even more enemies appeared and chased after Roman. There was no room to escape. He was caught in a perfect net. As time dragged on, the masters of Hector also appeared. Quang. Auras shone all around. All Aura swordsmen raised their aura and ran towards him. Among them, there were even three dot star Aura swordsmen, and powerful aura that ripped through the air was an attack even Roman couldn't ignore. The soldiers of the Hector kingdom were convinced that their attacks had worked this time. The captains had told them that Roman was a three-dot star aura swordsman, and there was no way he could deal with so many aura swordsmen at once. In the situation where flames made of aura were aiming for him from all directions, Roman instantly exploded his mana. Heavenly Demon Sword Art, Second Move His sword flashed. Mana that rose up wildly collided with the aura that filled his vision. Quak Quak Kang Quak Yuk The aura swordsmen were swept away in the powerful explosion. Their swords, which were shining with aura until a moment ago, were cut off, and a trail of blood was left behind as their bodies had been torn apart. The scene that a single blow had created was stunning. Still, despite such a great attack, Roman left the scene without a single gasp. Still, everyone was in shock. They all had realized how formidable Roman was as an enemy. He was completely beyond their common sense, and they realized that even if they grabbed him by the tail, he would kill them. Nevertheless, they continued to follow him recklessly. If Roman was such a monster by himself, what would happen if they missed him and he regrouped with his unit? They didn't even want to imagine it. Even if they captured all the camps on the southern front, Roman Dimitri seemed like a demon who would somehow slaughter all the soldiers of the Hector kingdom despite that. Everyone succumbed to that feeling. The soldiers of Hector threw away their lives, and they were even prepared to have Roman's sword on their necks if that could stop the movement of Roman. Even though it was miserable, ironically, it was also a golden chance to kill Roman. This wasn't being done because of cold and rational thoughts but purely due to instinct. Ten minutes had passed. It was a short time normally. However, the blood of those who had died during that short time was enough to create a river, and with every move, they seemed to be trampling on bodies. Since when? People thought it was weird. It seemed Roman Dimitri, the demon, could be caught in a short time, but why wasn't he being caught? Then, was he even really running away? The ominous thought that flashed in their mind made their hearts sink down to the bottom. Quack. Quack. This time, as well, he dealt with the pursuing enemy. Roman just wiped off the blood that was dripping down the sword and calmed his breathing. My stamina is also reaching the limit. The heavenly demon sword art wasn't something Roman could use often with his current body. However, as Hector's aura swordsmen continued to rush in from all directions, he had to use everything he could and exert his strength. Just then, a swordsman who was on the ground with a cut on his chest cursed at Roman. D.D.O. You think you can survive here? Huff. That will not happen. Thousands of troops are coming here. No matter how strong you are. Huff. In the end, the only way this will end is with you meeting a horrible death here. He was furious. He looked up at Roman with bloodshot eyes while screaming. At that moment, smirk. Roman smirked. Humans are always like that. As it was with Thompson and the others, people fall into illusions in certain situations. Why did you think I fell into that trap like that? Even when I saw the Aura Swordsmen coming forward with magical artifacts, why did I kill them and leave my body in the range of the shattering artifacts? W. What do you, the Hector Kingdom couldn't imagine it. Roman Dimitri, 
the bait, had deliberately waved his tail to them and showed them what they wanted to get. The knight's face was stained in shock. Looking down at him, Roman told him the cruel reality. There are a lot of people running around to pursue me. You might think that the siege is perfect, but in the end, there are bound to be loopholes in what humans do. One minute, no, even for thirty seconds, the enemies who reach me first are quite stupid for trying to risk their lives to catch me. How silly is that? The fact that you all are less prudent than ever because you think you have cornered me. He knew how reckless this was, but the heavenly demon, Bek Chun Da Hyuk, had always lived like this. He thought backward and was a being who was disruptive. Then let's move to where I need to go. There is still a lot of time until sunrise. The enemies would soon understand that Roman Dimitri, no, the fact that common sense didn't work in the world of Bek Jong Da Hyuk. Editor's Thoughts Whoa, so Roman is leading the troops of Hector to their deaths. Still, there could also be another fantastic plan lying underneath. Go, Roman. That will be amazing too. Chapter 99 The Unexperienced World, 3, You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. The Hector Kingdom was a step behind when they were chasing Roman. Naturally, when they arrived at the scene, they only saw the cold corpses of their allies and Roman standing alive there. The damage was quite serious. A feeling of fear crept into their minds. Nevertheless, that was only the case until the captain of the ranger unit, Jackson, arrived. This is as far as you go. He directly stepped on the tail. When he saw that Roman was still dealing with Hector's soldiers, he didn't delay his attacks and directly manifested an aura to deal with Roman. Rumble. The aura erupted like an explosion. And simultaneously, Roman understood that Jackson was a four-dot-star aura swordsman. Clang. Kong. The moment their swords collided, a massive aftershock was created on the battlefield. The aura that rose from Roman's sword wasn't pushed back when it collided with Jackson's aura, and Jackson's face was stained with shock when he saw that Roman had managed to block several of his attacks. It was natural. After all, Valhalla had said that Roman Dimitri was a three-dot star aura swordsman. Nevertheless, as Roman had blocked his attacks, he was clearly far superior to a three-dot star aura swordsman. Roman Dimitri is underrated. He felt goosebumps rise on his skin. Finally, he understood why the soldiers of Hector had been slaughtered like that in the past by Roman. The state of four of the defense lines was disastrous, and there was no way ordinary soldiers could do something like stop Roman, just like what was happening now. Help Captain Jackson. Attack. All of Hector's soldiers ran when they saw a gap. As Roman and Jackson were colliding with each other, they wanted to aim from behind and fatally wound Roman. They all aimed for Roman's blind spots precisely. In a fierce battle with Jackson, Roman shouldn't have been able to look back, but Roman somehow swung the sword behind him without even looking back and was able to defend himself from Jackson's attacks as well. Quack. With a single blow, all the soldiers were sent to the afterlife. Roman, who dealt with the danger as if it was nothing, slammed the ground and drove Jackson away instantly. This guy. Jackson was stunned. Roman had the leeway to deal with the soldiers while dealing with Jackson as well. Although it was disconcerting that Roman was more powerful than he thought, his instincts from experiencing the mountain warfare sent him a warning sign. Jackson was a four-dot star or a swordsman. The public only knew that Jackson was the captain of the ranger unit, but they didn't know exactly how strong Jackson was. That was why Jackson's name wasn't there in the rankings of the Hector Kingdom. He had opted for security over fame, and his attack forced Roman Dimitri to become shocked, at least, that was what he believed. Contrary to his expectations, Roman was just calm. Rather than the reaction he had expected, Roman didn't seem to care much about the fact that the opponent was a four-dot star or a swordsman. Although Jackson was doing his best to push away his opponent, the feeling of insecurity didn't go away. Obviously, Roman Dimitri was caught in a trap, 
and there was no way Roman could get out of this alive. Yet, how the hell was he staying that calm? It doesn't matter what kind of goal you had. The moment you met me, there was no way left to escape. He suppressed his doubts. This fight was already over. Because of the one minute Jackson had earned, beep. There. Besiege Roman Dimitri. Thousands of lights began to shine from behind Jackson. It was a perfect siege. Enemies rushed around quickly. Although he wasn't captured for even a few minutes, the siege of the Hector Kingdom made Roman hold his breath. Surrender, said Jackson wildly. If Roman resisted till the end, he was prepared to take damage and kill Roman. It was ideal for Roman to surrender, so he gave him time to choose. Surrender. That's funny. Roman laughed. Roman wasn't too surprised that he was a four-dot star or a swordsman, as Jackson had expected. The fact that Hector must have had a powerful force on their side to attack the Cairo kingdom was predictable in the first place, and the opponent being Jackson wasn't a variable. Naturally, as soon as Jackson appeared, he began to deal with him without panicking. Jackson's skills certainly weren't as good as he had thought of them, but it was well within the range he had expected them to be in. On the other hand, Jackson was confident of his victory. The confidence on his face was based on his experience and conviction that Roman was now cornered. Roman smirked when he saw Jackson's confident face. Even if I surrender, the Hector Kingdom will make sure to kill me as I am too big a danger to be left alive. Still, didn't you think something was strange while you were chasing me? Why did I go right into the trap the opponent had laid? Why did I draw your attention while running away in the mountains? There are three reasons. First of all, the fragments of light crystals attached to the body cannot bind me. Roman raised his mana. As the mana that originated from the Dantian circulated throughout his body, the fragments of light crystals attached to his body came off without much effort. It was so shocking that Jackson was truly perplexed. How were they able to catch Roman in the first place? It was because his ability to hide in the darkness was disabled, thanks to the light crystals. However, if that could be solved so simply, the current situation would make no sense. The ominousness in Jackson's body continued to grow. He feared what Roman would say next. Secondly, I have the confidence to get out of this siege under any circumstances. You all will see that soon. No matter how much you surround me, you will never be able to capture me. And finally, Roman spoke while gazing directly into Jackson's eyes. The last thing I wanted was for you guys to fall for my tricks and overlook something crucial. Jackson, you're the captain of the Ranger unit. The fact that you, such a powerful piece of the Hector kingdom, are here means that the defenses of Edwin Hector have been neglected. At that moment, Jackson's eyes widened so much that it wouldn't be wrong to say they were about to fall out of the eye sockets. His heart also sank down to the bottom. As soon as the ominous imagination in his head appeared, Jackson hurriedly kicked the ground to block Roman's intention and ran directly toward him. Nevertheless, he was late. As soon as Roman had finished his words, he had kicked a tree and jumped into the air with movements that weren't possible for a human to do. It was the pinnacle of the footwork techniques of Murim. All those who had made this siege were left behind with their faces looking like idiots. As Jackson saw Roman kick the trees and disappear quickly, he shouted crazily, Damn it! Go to the prince right now! The prince is in danger! The situation was reversed, and Roman had stunned Hector once again. Roman knew that there was a limit to the strategy of gnawing at enemies through a guerrilla operation. At first, it was a lot of fun because the enemies didn't anticipate his skills, but as talented people like Jackson appeared, he knew playing around anymore would be difficult. Roman was not the heavenly demon. If he was Beck Jung. Hyuk, the one who had conquered the entire Murim, in the first place, the life of Roman Dimitri wouldn't have been in danger even if hundreds of Jacksons had appeared to fight him. That was why he needed a new plan that was in line with his current abilities and could ruin the operations of the Hector Kingdom. There is only one way to end this war with a small number of troops. The commander, 
Once Edwin Hector, who planned all this, is killed, the Hector kingdom will not be able to continue this war any longer. He then turned his gaze. Edwin Hector was everything to Hector. From then on, Roman intentionally communicated with Hector and instilled fear in his enemies while grasping the flow of mana through the device. The magic communicator is a device that allows people to send their voices to the other end through the connection of mana. If I can figure out the flow of it, I can find where Edwin Hector is speaking from. And if the contact is successful, there is no need to contact him again. If I remember the unique mana flow from the magic device used by Edwin, I can find him out where he is with my skills. He planned it from the start to the end star. Asterisk all of Roman's plans were thoroughly calculated. He had contacted the man on purpose to grasp the flow of mana and had deliberately thrown himself into the enemy's trap. Then, he dragged them far away so that once the enemies decided they had cornered him, the powerful people who were protecting Edwin would come forward to take him down. He just gently wagged the tail they wanted to catch. Even though he had the skill to escape from the start, Roman took the risk and dealt with them. The plan was truly reckless but worth trying. It was based on high risk and high return. And on the battlefield, making daring decisions that could change the tide of the battle was a powerful weapon that Beck Jung Hyuk possessed. Chuck. The scene around him passed away quickly. It was thanks to the light footwork technique. His body, which was constantly exerting mana, was moving like a beast through the forest to find its prey. He examined the flow of mana and felt that Edwin Hector was nearby. And as expected, huh? Roman Dimitri. He found Edwin Hector. The escorts around him all looked bewildered and tried to block Roman, who had suddenly appeared, but they all got killed right away. Quack. The wall dividing Roman and Edwin was down. Now, it was time to deal with Edwin Hector. And just as Roman was about to cut off his head, he saw that Edwin Hector only had cold, subdued eyes while gazing directly at Roman. When he made the decision to pursue Roman, Edwin said, perhaps Roman Dimitri has already dug a trap ahead of us and is expecting us to pursue him. At first, we dealt with him on a whim, but that man isn't the kind to show up without a plan. Sacrifices are bound to happen in this plan, and even thousands of our men can die because of the trap Roman Dimitri has laid, but even so, we must pursue him. Only one thing. We need a clear result of slaughtering the enemies who have been resisting us till the end rather than being idiots who got hurt when they fought only 200 troops. His heart became cold the moment he set foot on the mountain. The war had already begun. No matter who the opponent was or what they had planned, Edwin wanted to win the war. Besides, the opponent was a monster called Roman Dimitri, which meant that man had to be taken down at all costs. He was sure that Roman Dimitri would come back as a greater danger to them if they left him alone. Roman Dimitri is like an unbridled foal. He obviously moves with a plan, but we cannot predict his actions. Then we need to focus on one fact, the opponent's purpose. If I were him, what would the most important thing be? Of course, there is the possibility of trying to prevent us from taking over the southern front over the span of three days. Nevertheless, if you think about it carefully, there is a simpler way to end this war once and for all rather than digging a trap and reducing the number of enemies slowly. No way. Jackson's eyes widened. He now seemed to understand what Edwin was saying. Right. That is to kill me, the commander of the Hector Kingdom. He may decide that coming here and killing me is easy while our troops will be pursuing him chaotically. It is truly a reckless plan one cannot choose unless they are crazy. Nevertheless, when I felt the hostility that man was showing me through the communication device, I understood that he was someone crazy enough to carry out that absurd plan. It was only a possibility. Thus, he wasn't sure if it would happen. Still, if it did, Edwin Hector decided to use it as an opportunity. The soldiers of the Hector kingdom have laid down their lives for the kingdom. And I, too, will become the bait for the kingdom. 
If Jackson reveals that I am defenseless by pursuing him, that man will surely think of it as a chance to end this war as soon as he can. Edwin Hector was reckless as well. Even though he knew how dangerous it was, he was ready to do it to win this war as soon as he could. The moment Roman Dimitri appears in front of me, we will have a solid chance to deal with him. And now, as Edwin had expected, the man, Roman Dimitri, had appeared in front of him. It was truly an absurdly risky decision. Edwin Hector had used everything he could to prepare for this, and the escorts had run in faster than expected. SSSHNNGGG. Mana suddenly rose from Edwin Hector's body. Nevertheless, it was different from the way an Aura swordsman used mana. Inferno. Weak. Rumble. An intense flame headed straight for Roman. Edwin Hector, the heir of the Hector family, a child born with the blessings of heaven, was a mage. Rumble. Bang. Editor's thoughts. Wow, that is a painful cliffhanger man. It is now clear that both Roman and Edwin are crazy lol. Still, what amazing plans. It seemed Roman had the upper hand, but then Edwin actually had planned it out and had prepared for Roman beforehand. It will be interesting to see what else Edwin has prepared to fight Roman. The will be so good. Chapter 100 The Unexperienced World, 4, you are listening at NovelFull.audio The heat was so fierce that it seemed to cover the entire world. The flames from Edwin Hector's hands had spewed out in all directions as if they were from a dragon's breath. Crackle. FSH. The heat was strong enough to melt one's skin the moment it touched them. Roman turned away from that. Although he was running at quite a speed, he stopped instantly and aimed his attack on one side of Edwin Hector while avoiding the heat. How dare you! Edwin's eyes gleamed blue. Memorize. The magic circle he had engraved beforehand to prepare for Roman Dimitri's appearance instantly appeared. Entangle. Pack. Papak. The ground rose. The seeds of the plants buried in the soil germinated at an incredible speed and became trees with trunks as large as a human and grabbed Roman's body. It was like a giant anaconda had caught Roman. The tree trunks, which moved as if they were living creatures, possessed the powerful strength to even destroy a human body within a few seconds. One by one, the trees attacked Roman to take his life. Nonetheless, Roman raised his mana and cut down the trunks instantly, but just then, a powerful shock arose right next to Roman. Quang. Rumble. How dare you touch the prince? He had seen a man as strong as him for the first time in his life. He seemed to be middle-aged. Wearing a robe to hide his face, he pushed Roman away strongly while his mustache continued to flutter because of the wind. His sword continued to show an explosive aura that was threatening Roman's life with every attack. It was different from the aura Jackson used. This man's aura was so intense that it even distorted the surrounding atmosphere, and it was powerful enough that Roman hadn't experienced anything like it before in this world. That man was a five-dot star aura swordsman named Butler, and he was the leader of the Royal Knights. He was also ranked second in Hector's rankings. Dot Butler coming here meant that Hector really was doing everything they could to win the war against Cairo. You cannot run anymore. Quang. Quang. Butler's aura exploded as it pushed Roman, and the forest around them shook. It wouldn't have been strange to say that the strong and swift attacks were good enough to behead Roman soon. Also, wind blade. Swish. Edwin Hector didn't miss the opportunity. The wind that blew from his hand turned into a blade and attacked the gaps that arose because of Butler's relentless attacks. Their combo was truly an unstoppable attack. Even Edwin had thought Roman couldn't survive this. Swish. In an instant, Roman threw himself far away. After dodging the wind blade, he immediately raised his head back up and continued responding to Butler's attacks, who had already rushed toward him. Quang. His head trembled. Edwin Hector had dug a perfect trap. 
He had disguised his defense by showing him that the escorts had run to Roman recklessly, but actually, he already had Butler on standby. No matter how much Roman Dimitri crawls and flies, he will not be able to withstand the combined attacks of a four-dot circle mage and a five-dot star or a swordsman. This trap was beyond common sense. Just as Roman Dimitri had done before, Edwin Hector also attempted an attack that was beyond common sense. He believed that with this, he could finally take Roman's breath away. Roman's head was spinning frantically. He was continuously feeling a repulsive energy because of his opponent's non-dot-stop combined attacks. Tui. He even spat out blood. Nonetheless, with Butler rushing toward him even at that instant, he couldn't lose his focus for even a single moment. As expected, they are fully prepared. Before he had made the attack, he had a gut feeling. Edwin Hector was a being who pretended to be someone ordinary even though he had raging mana within him. Thus, he knew Edwin Hector had dug a trap. Still, he followed his opponent's intention. Even though he knew that there was a trap, he appeared and attacked Edwin. Why? Why did he make such a reckless choice? It was because he wanted to see it. In his life as Roman Dimitri, he had not yet seen anything that could be called a real crisis. Blood Fong, Barco, and even the guerrilla operation, in the life of Beck Jong. Hyuk, all those things could be considered ridiculously easy. As his heart was drenched in comfort, Roman deliberately came out and put himself on the line of death to test himself. Kwong. He blocked the attack. Still, a five-dot star aura was so powerful that it shook his insides. Roman Dimitri's body had become stronger thanks to him experiencing the skeletal metamorphosis, but it wasn't yet at the level to take on a five-dot star aura. Furthermore, Butler's sword technique was smooth and systematic. It showed how long he had trained in that sword technique, and he wasn't allowing Roman to take a break. Kwong. Kakang. Sparks flew everywhere. As the auras collided, a strong shock swept through the surroundings. At that moment, Roman felt terrified. He could feel the mana rushing toward him once again. Naturally, he realized that the combo attacks hadn't ended yet. Swish. Wind blade. The blade made of wind flew past him. Blood splattered on his face, and Butler approached him while wielding his sword. The situation made him go out of breath. Roman's stamina was reaching the limit due to the successive attacks, yet he looked straight into Butler's eyes with an icy dot cold and threatening gaze. Heavenly Demon Sword Art, Third Move The mana within his dantian trembled. Suddenly, a powerful explosion was created. Mana shone in all directions as if an active volcano was exploding, and the manifested aura attacked Butler terrifyingly. Kwakwang. The power of the attack was literally incredible. Seeing the attack ripping through the air like butter, Butler hurriedly raised his sword and manifested an aura with all his might. Yet, he wasn't able to completely block the attack. Blood flowed out of his nose as he bounced off the ground. Nonetheless, that was all. Although it was quite a shock, he had not collapsed. Just where did this monster even pop up from? His voice trembled. Edwin, a four-dot circle mage, and he, a five-dot star aura swordsman, had attacked Roman relentlessly. Even if the opponent was a five-dot star aura swordsman equal to Butler, they would have been dead by now, but the current situation was different from what he had imagined. Roman's violent counterattack had entirely shattered the plan they had drawn in their heads. Furthermore, Roman Dimitri is still in his mid-twenties. He felt goosebumps rise on every single part of his body. He had reached the level of five-dot star when he was in his fifties, but his opponent was already able to counter such a power. How was this even possible? Nonetheless, Butler felt fortunate. It was because he managed to meet Roman Dimitri now. It was like a golden chance to deal with the monster that belonged to the Cairo kingdom and would threaten them in the future. As of now, Roman was still not at a level to defeat him. Also, glance. He saw Edwin Hector. He noticed that Edwin, 
who had raised his mana violently, had a stiff expression. Now it really is over. Break. Hold. That was double casting. The mana instantly swept over Roman. Break was a magic that destroyed the target with a strong pressure. On the other hand, hold was a magic that suppressed the target and made them unable to move. Both of the spells had clear purposes. The first one would break Roman's sword, and while the second one held him down, Butler would end his life with an attack while he was defenseless and couldn't move. Edwin also knew that Roman didn't have the magic immune artifact. Because of the momentary gaps that Roman had revealed, he would now die. Roman Dimitri doesn't seem to have the aura of any magic artifact. Therefore, there is no way he can stop this attack. He was certain. However, an unbelievable thing happened just then, swish. Roman moved and avoided Butler's attack. Furthermore, even his sword looked fine. When Edwin saw there was no effect of, hold, flinch. Roman instantly counterattacked. Naturally, blood splattered on the face of Butler. It was an unexpected counter, so he couldn't even react. None of them knew Roman's secret. The moment Edwin Hector used magic, Roman immediately understood what his opponent was thinking. He's trying to suppress me with magic power. He felt the force of hold penetrate his body and suppress his muscles. Magic was a force he had experienced for the first time in his life as Roman, and he had also studied a lot about it. The intangible force, the realm of gods that allows one to create something out of nothing, that was what the book said. There was no magic in Murim. However, he knew about the realm of magic, which was similar but also different. In the last six months, Roman had sincerely prepared for war. He had started to research magic, thinking that he might meet mages on the battlefield, and was able to get desired results. Magic and witchcraft are different, but their fundamentals aren't so different. Like witchcraft, magic is based on mana and tries to infiltrate one's body and attack them with mana. Thus, as long as I use the heavenly demon godly art and remove it instantly, it should be enough. That wasn't as simple as it sounded. Mana penetrated the body with the intention of never being forced out of it, but Roman's mana management ability was at its peak. It was because he was Beck Jong. Hyuk. Without any special effort, the mana stored in Roman's Dantian moved and evaporated the power of hold. Also, break wasn't a concern. That was because Roman's sword wasn't one that would be broken down by magic like that. He had gone through hell and repetitively subjected his body to flames to make this sword after he had given up Salamander. Edwin's spells of magic were broken. Obviously, Roman didn't prepare for the war while thinking that Edwin was going to be his opponent. Before the war, Roman had just prepared for all possible variables. The unexpected situation made Edwin and Butler utterly shocked. Obviously, Roman didn't miss that gap. Pack. He dug into the gap in an instant. This time, Butler couldn't even move. By the time he came back from the shock and tried to catch Roman, Roman's sword had already decapitated Edwin Hector. Swish. The attack was perfect. Edwin's head was now in the air, no, it should have been. Nonetheless, magical power didn't allow that. Blink. With the spell, blink, Edwin Hector's body disappeared from where it originally was. He reappeared a little further from where Roman was. Nevertheless, his face was ghastly pale as he had overused his magical prowess. Fucking bastard. Butler's emotions exploded when he saw that his prince had almost died. He manifested an aura that was incomparable to before and rushed ahead with the momentum to kill Roman at any cost. Also, Fweet. Whistles could be heard from every direction. The troops who were chasing Roman seemed to have finally arrived. With Jackson rushing toward him frantically, Roman judged he had to make a decision quickly. If I stay here any longer, I will die. He saw Edwin Hector far away from him. Then, he said, remember this. I will catch you. If I meet you next time, you will not be able to survive like today. 
once he finished his words, he kicked the ground and moved away instantly. Even Butler was left speechless when he tried to reach for the space that was filled with darkness, where Roman had disappeared, but couldn't even find Roman's traces. It was thanks to the Shadow King's martial arts. The other troops tried to quickly find Roman by lighting up the darkness with torches, but there was no way Roman would be found so easily. Eventually, everyone stopped in their spots. Seeing the darkness they could never dare to step in and the crazy situation in front of them, they only had one thought. This is Hector's defeat. That was an unacceptable reality, and even more so for Edwin Hector, who had lived his life being acknowledged by everyone he met. Naturally, he could hardly take his eyes off the darkness Roman had disappeared into a few moments ago. Editor's Thoughts This was like one of the best chapters yet in the heavenly demon can't live a normal life. Technically, Roman is already stronger than Butler as he was countering both his and Edwin's attacks combined. Also, this is chapter 100, so we have come quite far lol. Thank you for the continued support, everyone. How do you all think the heavenly demon can't live a normal life is going?